Is that it? You are watching. Am I allowed to interrupt you like I normally <laughs> no, do? No, Greg, okay. not yet. Okay, that's not the lie. You're watching Co-op for Two. I'm Jesse. I'm here with Greg. Thanks for having me on your channel. We're broadcasting live from Champaign, Illinois, June 28th, around 7 p.m. Central. And we're doing a, this is our sort of six-month mm -hmm. anniversary live stream channel update question and answer. Are you excited to be here? Yeah, I have no idea what's going to happen. This is uh, sort of your... First new thing in our checklist yeah. is we check the line and see how far over Greg is. Okay, not There's so no bad. line anymore, though. <laughs> there is. It's out there. Can't see the line. Can you ask? Is anyone... Can it, let's, this is our audio-visual check. Mm -hmm. Like, let us know in the channel if you can hear us okay. Um, Thank you. Tom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it... I need my glasses. Is that, is that Tom Chick? Or? Uh, greetings. Okay. We got a few people in here, but uh -huh. no, nobody's saying we can... Yes, we can hear you, see you. Yes. Fantastic. Thank Great. you. Okay. Okay. We're on uh, YouTube's um, lowest latency, so hopefully we'll be able to see your channel, your comments a little quicker. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's give them a little outline of what we're going to do today. I've actually got some stuff I them wanted to talk and about. And, and Greg, and this is all a surprise to Greg. All new to me. In all fairness, you did get emailed the the itinerary, but we had some discussions about we, whether. Do you should should we we didn't do all of our introductions though because what? we actually have Sarah. Oh, that's with right. Us today. We put Sarah back Sarah. there. Uh huh. Probably wasn't too happy about me waking her up. Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's take a look mm -hmm. at the itinerary for you guys. Oh, that's not it. There it is. Okay. So we're going to begin, actually, let's see if we can do this a little fancier. Okay, there we go. We're going to begin with our traditional statement of responsibility and blame, which is a new concept. I'm not quite sure I like the sound of that. <laughs> it's a new concept. Um, then we're going to look at some channel stats. Then, uh, then we're going to have some philosophical discussion mm -hmm. about our first six months, which may or may not mm -hmm. be interesting to you guys. Then we'll play a little game with Greg that got ruined. The surprise got ruined, but we'll still play it. Mm -hmm. And the channel will have a chance to play it also. Okay. Then we'll give away Detective City of Angels. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll spend some more time with actual Q&A. Okay. All right, so, but it's great to see everyone here. Let's begin with the statement of... Uh, responsibility and blame. Okay, <laughs> this, does, this is not a real thing. It doesn't exist. But I thought it, we would give people, you know, this is what we're going to do today is behind the scenes, you know, we're, we're just going to be open and honest. So if you've got a question you want to ask, you can ask it. But you may notice that Greg and I do this little thing where I, I say, how does it go? I say, you say, thanks for having me on the channel. Mm. And I say you're welcome, and and that's the purpose of that is to put the blame on <laughs> who it should be on, which is my, <laughs> it goes on my shoulders yeah. if something goes wrong. No, well, well, this is actually interesting. So essentially, if you ever want to do a project with somebody that like we get along famously, you know, like just I like just like my wife was just sick about hearing about Jesse all the time. Like one of my favorite people, I was just so excited about Jesse, and then. But surely we will be able to do a project together and it will work out. Yeah, surely it'll it will be a cake. And it was not a... Uh, yeah. So beware. We're going to get into that. The whole six-month oh, thing well. is going to... But, but yes, but... Yeah. but so our, of, our agreement came down to like, okay, well, clearly we don't have the same ideas about how to do things. And so, Jesse, it was your idea to do the channel and stuff. And so, be your channel and I'll just be a part of it. And I'll just say, hey, thanks for having me on your channel. And that was just... Our way of making it work. I'm yeah. a worker bee. You're you, you're in charge of the channel. And I that's, mean, and that's good. You've, if you've watched the videos, we sort of joke around about it and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But it does make me think. We've talked about my father was a sociologist, mm -hmm. and one of these interesting sociological theories are, is role theory, mm -hmm. which says that you know people s sort of assume a role in a certain circumstance, mm -hmm. and then they start to follow scripts and norms for that role. And even though I tease you about this concept, um, it turns out that Greg and I have some strong opinions about certain things. And, <laughs> and you found yeah. this solution. I, I mean, I think of this as our project together. People who have watched the live streams mm -hmm. of Just Me know it's not mm -hmm. good to watch Just Me. It's much better, the two of us. Mm -hmm. But you came up with a solution, which is to sort of say that, you know, mm -hmm. I can let go of certain things that I might not agree with mm -hmm. if 
you know, it's that's the kind of system. The system yeah. is that it's not on me when there's a disagreement. So it's more like we're mm-hmm. doing we're doing a lot of this together, but when there's something you don't agree with or something that we disagree with, you've you've you'll let me yeah. make that final decision. So that's our long way of our okay. statement of responsibility and blame. Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully that makes it kind of makes it, it make it makes some sense. All right. Beware of starting a business with your with your. Well, house. it's true. So we're going to talk about. I, I want us to talk about mm-hmm. the difficulties we've had because I think it's interesting for people sure. who might be okay. thinking about this. But before we do, I want to go over. Oh, are you too far over? I don't know what I'm saying. Go okay, ahead. I want to go over a little bit of the stats just just for the sake of historical purposes. So we've got currently, and also because it's a little bit of a surprise, we have 98 videos public. Wow, really? Is that really? really Yeah, 98 public, 118 total, because there's some in the Patreon Mm -hmm. preview and Patreon bonus episodes. That is, for after six months, four per week. Four videos per week we put out. That's pretty good. And 200 hours of video, so wow. over an hour a day. Oh, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty substantial. Yeah. That's 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 a lot of content we've made. Um, Twenty-five thousand views. Wow. Four point five thousand cool. watch hours. I mean, these are all like they're they sound good mm-hmm. compared to any other real YouTube channel. They're terrible, mm-hmm. I think, but <laughs> for us with no expectations. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Uh, 380 subscribers. Oh, that's which, pretty cool, yeah. yeah you know, that's it's something. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. We have seven Patreon supporters. <clears throat> it's actually gone down a bit <laughs> because my wife dropped out <laughs> of supporting the channel. <laughs> so that's that's interesting. Yeah. Is that like a red flag? Is that like is that like a, a, a not so subtle not so subtle message? But we did have a couple of new subscribers. Mm-hmm. We had a Gustav Runender subscribed Thank and you. has been really fun to chat with he's joined the discord and comments mm-hmm. on our uh in the patreon mm-hmm. post it's really fun and I, I do want to talk about that a little bit more but also uh jonathan Klabund, um who i haven't talked to and uh uh 40 hertz uh, ek who's a person i know from donation mm-hmm. coder and sydney dean who is not a patreon supporter but just sent us a game oh yeah and Micro Macro, and we thank actually you. played it. Yes, thank you. We yeah. actually played it for like an 64. hour today. Yeah, we the played the first. Uh, well, yeah, I actually bought that game for my nieces, and uh, they're not really gamers at all, but they really like, uh, they seem to really enjoy it. Like, they were like, oh, look at this, is over here. You know, so they, we kind of had some fun with it. And we played the first couple of missions, and Jesse tried the first couple of missions without me, and then so I was like, well, we got a few minutes, so why don't we uh, try a couple more? And we actually had quite a lot of fun. It's very, it's actually it's surprisingly very, good. Yeah. But we'll like, do a we'll do a, like a full review. Yeah, we'll on do it, a review. So not a playthrough because I feel like that's. Insanity. It seems like kids would love it, but actually we were having a lot of fun yeah. with it too. So, um, Big kids. Yeah. All right. So and now before we talk about the six month review, mm-hmm. I just want to. I thought we might mention the videos that we've done since our last update in the last mm-hmm. month. And if you watched this live stream from the start. You saw the Odd Couple intro with new music by someone I know from Donation Coder, a trumpet player, who composed a little riff on Odd Couple, Eric Lofgren. So thank you for that music. And I wanted to tell a funny story that I'm not sure you've heard this story. I don't think you have heard it. Okay, I'll try to make this brief. Uh, I love the Odd Couple, and I thought it was perfect theme for, for our channel, right? Mm-hmm. So I started out using the original music from the Odd Couple theme, which is Neil Hefty is the composer. But we knew that that couldn't stay up, that we couldn't use that for long because we'd get copyright strikes Mm -hmm. for that. And I searched and I found on one of the licensed music sites a song I really liked, Mm. a nice jazz song. I was like, wow, this is really good. So I started using it. And when I talked to um, Eric about composing a new version, I said, you know, it would be great if you could make a version for us based mm-hmm. on Odd Couple, but if you can't, I found this other music that's licensed and I can use. And he's like, oh yeah, that lic- that thing you think is licensed, that's Miles Davis. That's four. That's like a super <laughs> famous jazz song, <laughs> and that's why you like it so much. Wow, so it turned out weird. someone had like made a version of four. 
and funny. uploaded it, and we really shouldn't be using <laughs> That's it. That's pretty funny. So, yeah, but it was funny how much I liked it, and I was like, wow, yeah. for a licensed Yeah, there's this licensed of... movie you can get. It's great. Yeah. It's about this uh, intergalactic, like, <laughs> rebellion and this ancient religion, and they have, like, these, uh, like, electronic yeah, exactly. swords. It's fantastic. So check out four if you want to. How Are we, like, addressing questions as we go? Uh, uh, no, you can just let them pile up, talk amongst yourself. We'll get to your questions in a minute. Uh, you, you've got a couple of Lord of the Rings lovers. Oh, we got a cat uh, alert. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for Tom Schick and... Uh, well, maybe Dynamic this two, is a... Gonna... As, after we discuss the videos we did, we'll revisit... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mark, you're welcome, Mark. Yeah, uh -huh. Run and R. Yeah, that's cool. A couple of Lord of the Rings people here. Yeah, we're gonna, we'll talk about that in a second, as soon as we finish these. Okay, so we also did your Gloomhaven 3D mm -hmm. painted model video, which turned out yeah. pretty good. We did like eight hours of Fast and Furious, which surprised us. And we've been playing through the initiative, which I'm really enjoying, but it is testing our friendship, that game. <laughs> well, but, yeah, I mean, it's, for some reason that game has really let us butt, butt heads quite a bit, but it's really very interesting. It's like, I love it when you learn about like different topics from games like you know I, I mentioned before like I think when we were playing it when you know the Uwe's new game came out um I can't remember the name of it now but it was about the Hollow Tau Hollow Tau yeah mm -hmm. and it's about that region and that they produce a lot of hops and stuff for beer and I'm like that's really interesting and so like just anything that spurs you to learn more and stuff and so this game is all about ciphers and having like a cipher that you run something through and then another cipher it's just really interesting yeah. to like learn about that I stuff. was saying I can't wait to um, review it like some mm -hmm. of the reviews I'm like genuinely curious mm -hmm. like what we're gonna say mm -hmm. and I see you've got a comment from Tom Chick that says Greg's models are amazing oh yeah thanks Tom yeah yeah yeah, yeah cool yeah that's uh, that's not really my craftsmanship it's just I'm working with the, the tools I've got or whatever with them oh, they're pretty beautiful yeah thank you um, okay, and then if you've been watching, you see that I uh, did four. I played through all four Vienna Connection missions, and then did an hour and forty minute review, which mm -hmm. is kind of ridiculous. But I figured someone else has already done the quick reviews. Mm -hmm. A couple of good YouTube channels that I mentioned. So I just did the hour and forty minute mm -hmm. discussion of. Well, I was looking at it like yeah. like we're like a podcast, you know, just put it on and listen to like our thoughts on things or whatever. I mean, I, I you know, for a living, I drive all over the place so i you know it's nice to have lengthy discussions about topics i'm interested in so that's yeah kind of nice. when we started this channel we thought well people can listen to us well i can like i i, I like the long audio books i mm -hmm. listen to when i go to sleep so that's what our channel is for to like mm -hmm. put you to sleep or <laughs> or on the road i guess you don't want to go to sleep but i guess all right and we did get a nice little surprise from portal games that had a little um a little quote from mm -hmm. one of my reviews on vienna connection all right, so um, before we get into the, the six months, because we've got a couple comments about the Lord of the Rings, we should say that Greg's Lord of the Rings live stream Q&A was like our third highest watched. Oh, yeah. And cool. your original getting started with Lord of the Rings in 2021 video is by far the most like watched the video we've ever done. Video, yeah. yeah, it's kind of Well, crazy. I mean, it, you know, I got there's a few people here that have like said that they've gotten into the game or enjoyed that and stuff. So that's pretty cool. I mean, like, I mean, that's awesome. Like, if, somebody's, if, if, uh, if somebody says to me, like, hey, like, I found this amazing thing because you helped me to find it, that's, that's awesome. I mean, like, I'm often appreciative of, like, somebody mentioning something or talking about something. I'm like, oh, that sounds really neat. You know, that's a great recommendation. And then that leads to something I really enjoy, and that's awesome. I mean, it's just like a big karmic wheel of, like, good stuff, right? Like, good karma or whatever. And it would be doubly great if those people who tuned in for that Lord of the Rings people found something useful in our channel mm -hmm. though I'm not sure there's that much overlap mm -hmm. um, and did I make clear that we'll spend some time answering questions but like you guys if you've got questions you want to throw at us now that's fine otherwise we've got stuff that I want to talk about mm -hmm. and we'll just come back but there will be a point in this video mm -hmm. where we stop and just take random questions okay I want to talk a little bit about our six months and sort of from a philosophical mm -hmm. standpoint. So okay. we're going to talk about the positives, the negatives. This is all new to Greg, seeing this for the first time. I'm just along for the ride. And then some advice yeah. to people thinking about doing uh, this. Which we broached already, I guess. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I've got some specific advice. Okay. okay, so I want you to tell the story, though, how we started our first tiptoe into doing this series. So, you know, the pandemic was very, you know, changed a lot of people's lives, changed a lot of, you know, stuff for, you know, it's had a huge impact on the world, obviously. And so we had played some detective over Zoom, which I mentioned before was a, per, like, 
there's good and bad about the game, but we each owned a copy and we played over Zoom and it was like the perfect game for that, for playing over Zoom. Like, perfect. Mm -hmm. And so we played that whole thing. We spent like eight hours, we spent hours before playing each case. But that was really the only gaming we did. I mean, we couldn't get together at all and stuff. And so... We had one meeting where we bought eight fans and tried to figure out a way oh, yeah, that in yeah. the house we could, we could get like, enough airflow that. Yeah. that we could... Yeah, like to see like... We uh, we lit like a match and some of the. I bought a fog machine yeah, to that, test. I, I said I said well you could get a fog machine and then like the next day Jesse's like I found one on Craigslist like what I tried it, it you know evaporated but anyway so we we both got tested and then even though we were both tested we said well we'll just meet in hotels since I think uh, it, it doesn't matter but but so we had a co-op con which we had done two years prior mm -hmm. every year we would do a co-op con where we get together. And just play a lot of games for three or four days or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so we had a, I got a big suite or whatever, and we played just for three days. Now we were supposed to play games for three <laughs> days, and I thought, here's our chance finally to play some games. Mm -hmm. And Jesse thought, well, instead of playing games, let's mainly focus on recording our thoughts. Not on really, this podcast. mainly, but like it was yeah, a mixture. Was a, yeah. Uh, so that was a big you know it was so audio only audio only That's so right. and you know it was all over the map it was just like a bunch of discussion it was just crazy that was much, the worst much part like, yeah but, but that we wasn't lost, the worst yeah we that lost was the worst episode. part we had a good hour our first we were all excited about it we yeah, recorded it that was kind of fun i was like that's kind of neat and, and then it didn't record didn't and record, that put it which bad. is like yeah that's yeah, that's that happens to everybody and any content creator has lost an episode or yeah. whatever and it sucks. but that hurt yeah that hurt. and so from that jesse was like what if we did a channel and everything and then that was well, it was kind of fun. Yeah. Like, it was fun to discuss things. We talked normally hours no, normal, after playing games, but yeah. it was kind of yeah, fun. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've seen stuff on threads and stuff on BGG, and people talk about, like, they'll be like, the game will end, and everybody goes home, and I'm like, I want to talk about it. And they're like, I don't want to talk about it. The game's over. And I'm like, and, and for me, I'm like, no, no, no. I want to talk about it. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of stories I could tell about those kind of scenarios. But, you know, people have criticized me before. I remember some of my friends were like, you know, Greg, you talk about the game and the things that are happening in the game so much in a competitive game. Uh, you're really giving away your strategy and stuff. I'm like, I don't care. I would prefer to lose, but be able to discuss the interesting yeah, dynamics happening. Because that's that's part For of the For me, I would even go so far to say, like, <laughs> just talking about the game afterward is the point for mm -hmm. me. Like, the playing the game is, is what you yeah, have to like, do before you get to get to you talk You go to the movies, it. you get out of the movies, and you stand in the parking lot. Like, you know, I mean, I think I've spent thousand hours in parking lots over the years talking just about the talking about the movie afterwards mm -hmm. and that's kind of what i enjoy and i think that's kind of what we both enjoyed and Je jesse's like let's put it on film or whatever yeah the 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 covid made us a bit crazy and went, yeah. we went right into it mm -hmm. okay so i'm gonna list the things that i thought mm -hmm. were the most enjoyable from mm -hmm. the experience from six months of doing this um the main one was just going into an area that we knew nothing about mm -hmm. uh you haven't you You've done a little podcasting before, I did a, a little, little bit. For Lord okay, of the Rings, that's actually. right. You had the Lord of the Rings podcast. Okay, so this is not my area where I'm comfortable. But so it was just fun, just mm -hmm. trying something new, and the technical stuff of the the lighting mm -hmm. and the filming and the audio, getting all that right. Well, you thought you were going to hate the editing. That was a big. Thing. That was and one of the biggest really surprises. Yeah. That we we both agreed. Like we have to do this in a way that editing mm -hmm. is absolute minimal because it's so horrible. But it turns out there's some creativity, some fun in the editing. Mm -hmm. And I like playing around with the timing and the little outtakes. I wonder, the people who watch our videos, are there people who don't realize their outtakes? Because, you know, YouTube generation, you just click away as mm -hmm. soon as it ends. It's the only part of the videos I watch. I know, that's right. And the intros to make sure I do it right. <laughs> um, okay, so I love, and I love making the outtakes. <laughs> now, <laughs> you can, the whole middle of the video could just be you like, <laughs> Animated it like CGI punching me in the, in the head. Sometimes like I just skim yeah. through it myself. So who knows what's in those videos except the ends. Um, but we were talking about uh, aphantasia. Aphantasia is the name for people who can't visualize, can't, oh, yeah, yeah. can't generate imagery. And we were wondering if maybe, like I have that. Mm -hmm. I can't visualize someone's face. And I was wondering, I wanted to ask if other Whoop. people in the channel... If any of you have that aphantasia where you can't sort of imagine how someone's face looks. But we were thinking that's partly why maybe I like having these things on, on video so much. It's fun to see us having fun. Like sometimes we'll get into a fight, the two of us. Like there'll be some exchange 
and I'll be in a bad mood, I'll be upset, but then I'll be editing and we're like laughing and having fun and I forget it all. It's all, I can see it on the, I can see us having fun in the videos. But you don't have that. <laughs> you don't. You can't. You don't watch that and get reminded that we're having fun. But maybe if you watch the outtakes, you do. What is your favorite part about this six month experience? Well, it's just definitely been rocky. Been trying on our. That's not the stuff. fun part. I'm just saying so. But like, I think that mm -hmm. in general, like, it's I like having the discussions and stuff. I think that's fun. I think it's fun discussing games, and I'm a very analytical person, so I find that to be enjoyable to analyze things and stuff like that. And I like uh, when we kind of go off the path and talk about books and movies and stuff, which is kind of yes. fun. Yeah. You were saying at one point that you sort of like that, like once we review a game, it's like wrapped up and oh, finished. Yeah. There's yeah. like some sense of completion, like we've played it and we've reviewed it, now mm -hmm. it can go away. So I think like there's a, in gaming in general, there's a very large sway for people to say, you know what, I don't. I don't want to buy the, the legacy game. I don't want to buy the game that's a one shot, right? Like, I mean, and and to me, I'm like, I, I'd prefer that, you know, I want, let me go through the story. I mean, you know, there's games sometimes you think like, well, surely I must have played the game 20 times. And then you look and you're like, oh, I only played this like four or five or six times, right? But the thing is like, it's, it doesn't matter. People are never going to play these games, you know. Uh, Rob Davio, there was like an interview with him I watched and mm -hmm. like, he was just like, you could tell he's mad. He didn't like uh -huh. how people were really against legacy and thing. And he said, he goes, I guess. And it was, you could tell like he'd finally gotten to this point after like getting through all the frustration with people. And he's like, I guess people just don't like the option to be taken away from them. They're mm -hmm. not going to use the option to play it a hundred times, right. but they don't like the option being taken away, taken away from them. And for me, I'm like, no, I, I mean, like, I'd love to just play through the game, get ring every bit of it out, that game out. And be done. And then be done. And yeah. some games are great to be able to go back continually and continually, but there's so much out there. And so it is kind of neat to play through, like, you know, to play through, like, a campaign or the whole thing. And then just, like, Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. My wife and I played that earlier this year, and it was just, like, fantastic. And it's like, there's the bow. It's done. Let's try the next thing, you know? Yeah, and I, so I like that, you know? I agree. Tom Chick says, you guys squabbles are actually pretty endearing. I love that you don't edit them out. They're very mm -hmm. humanizing. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Um, okay. So I listed my three, I picked my three favorite videos. I don't know. I gave Greg a mm. little bit of warming, warning while we were taking a walk to our local game store called Titan, yeah. Titan yeah. Games. Yeah. Um, but I picked my three favorites. Okay, let's hear them. Uh, my first one was how to be a good cooperative teammate. <laughs> That, that video, for, not for the reason you're yeah, laughing yeah, yeah. at, but I thought it was just fun. You know, this is this message is sort of like, <laughs> it's sort of like your wife on taking your money <laughs> off of it. I'm not going to support on Patreon anymore. There's like a message there, you know? There's like a, sub, a subtitle there, a subtext. And this is like, this is your subtext too, I think. Well, it isn't, but it, it has paid yeah, dividends, that, that yeah, teammate. Like Greg's, Greg's a little switch went off when we mm -hmm. did that. Not on purpose, but you, you became... You, you've been much more... Let's go um, to number two. You've just been... You've been the praise yeah. has been flowing mm -hmm. a little more steadily, like the spice must flow. That <laughs> channel, that video made the praise flow. Dune has been delayed again. But um, I liked being able to philosophize about... It was like kind of a self-help. Like, so watch that, and you came up with a great idea, like send someone that link if they're not a good <laughs> teammate. Um, I liked, uh, my other favorite was our Seventh Continent review, mm -hmm. just because it was the first one that we did that really went long, that like discussed different books, mm -hmm. and then we discussed like uh, Seventh Continent, the Seventh Citadel, the next game. Like we went into a deep dive, mm -hmm. a deep cut, and some of those things, and that was very fun. And then my last favorite that I picked of the three favorites were our top tens because it was fun not knowing what the other person mm -hmm. was going to say. I, I like that. I find that I like the videos where One I'm not sure what like you're going to say. Yeah. You liked it yeah. too, though. It was, yeah. Yeah, didn't cool. yeah, yeah. No, I just was laughing because of that person that, like, they called it an abortion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that's right. They had, we did they're, get... like, they're like, don't take anything, don't take this the wrong way, but, like, they're like, best wishes to you, even though I hope you die. Basically, it was like this like this very mean life. And that's yeah. what happens when you're on the But it, it also, he made good points. Like, you couldn't really sure. disagree with his points. Sure. Why am I watching an hour and a half yeah. top ten? Any favorite jumps yeah. out at you? I mean, I liked, uh, I guess I liked the Lord of the Rings one because it's a subject that I really enjoy, obviously. And, I'm, and, and it was cool to, like, have a lot of people be like, great, this is what I needed right now. Like, you know, this is exactly, and I, that's yeah. what I was trying to do. And so that was kind of cool to be like, oh, 
people, some people saw this, appreciated it. Like it helped them, you know, it was like very helpful to people. And I guess that's pretty cool. Absolutely. And uh, I like the horrified one we did, like the playthrough one, because I, I think that was one of a very early video. And I liked, like, that was where I was like, whoa, Jesse edited all these cool, like, we'd be talking about something and it'd be like, whoop, here's like, mm -hmm. here's the movie, here's the movie picture, whatever. Like I mentioned a friend of mine who's an artist and he was like, here's his, uh, mm -hmm. you know, here's the paintings. So I thought that, that was kind of really kind of cool. I was very excited about that or whatever. Yeah. And I really, I like, I really enjoyed our discussions on like Endangered. I felt like it was a very good discussion, like a very long, lengthy, but like kind of, I was, I felt like, I like it when... I feel like we're making interesting points or we, or there's th interesting food for thought there to, to spur other people to think about interesting things. So I like that. Yeah. That, that endangered one is a good example of something where we, I think it was partly a surprise, right? Like we mm -hmm. didn't know exactly what we were going to say. And in the, in the sure. flow of our conversation, we both made some interesting points. Um, okay. Um, let's talk about the negatives a little bit. The one you mentioned already, which was a huge surprise to both of us, mm -hmm. which was how difficult it was for us to sort of compromise, yeah. to figure out, like we yeah. had different views of things. You have very particular ways, certain things mm -hmm. you feel. And this may be one of those blind spots things. Like I didn't, I don't, I didn't feel like I was that way too. But if you look at the facts, we both had very strong opinions yeah. about certain things. And well, so, even, yeah. so just last point, mm -hmm. even while we're sitting there disagreeing, like I can feel in the back of my head me saying, this isn't important, and yet mm -hmm. it's hard to let go of it. Well, I think that in general, like, it's just, it's it's a preference thing. It's not like, you know, that's the part, part of the thing. It's like, this wall should be blue. No, I want to paint it yellow. Well, I think it should be blue. I think it should be yellow. And that's, it's a preference. I mean, one of, you know, there's no right or wrong. It's just two people have different preferences. Yeah. It's hard. But, it's like that cooks in the kitchen thing. I mean, like. You sure, need, sure. But. There must be something about going in front of a camera to people that makes these things have extra weight mm -hmm. because you're kind of like putting forth, you're putting yourself out there sure, yeah. and you feel like, well, if I compromise on this, it, it, it's partly be the idea that it looks like you've decided to do this, right? Like, like if you, sure. if you dress up and you don't like the way you look and you're wearing some hat and you got on the channel and then the person's like, well, you look funny, you look bad. And also, you've chosen to look that yeah. way. So that's like a double whammy. And the fact that everything we put out there would feel like it's our assertion that this yeah. is good. Runadar, are you in a band? <laughs> that sounds like that sounds like something like very uh, like like you've had that experience. Yeah, yeah. it's a very apt metaphor, and also mm -hmm. I feel like it maybe it's. Uh, or you could imagine if the two of you were a writing team and you went in to pitch a movie yeah. to a group, and like you have to pitch the movie that you don't really agree yeah. with, you feel like it's reflecting poorly on you because there's this is I love a. Uh, so I remember really enjoying the movie Payback when I first saw it, uh -huh. and I don't Mel know if Gibson. I yeah I don't know if I'd like it now. I mean Mel Mel Gibson is like kind of a bit he's like Tom Cruise where he's always just Mel Gibson, you know, and uh, he's trying to get his money back and he's just like he's like like I need my money and they're like well if we decided by this committee he's like no one man you go high enough you get to one man he's like I believe that's right <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, so okay uh, one person in charge yeah, that's my point. The other part, but we've, we've pushed through it. Like that's mm. been the, that's the, the other side of that coin is it's been sort of, it's been trying. Like we've, it, we keep having little, mm. we keep butting heads occasionally, yeah. but we've pushed through it. We both value our friendship and our mm -hmm. game playing enough that we've stuck through it. The other thing is I thought we would get more Patreon supporters. And I was warned ahead of time, like, do not be, do not. You shouldn't be asking for Patreon supporters until right. you're like a year in and everyone likes what you're doing free. And then you make the video that's like, we're going to go off the air if we don't get supporters. So, <laughs> but we did it differently and we'll come back to this. Maybe we'll stop asking for Patreon supporters yeah, I, a little I, bit. Yeah. It's, there's no point to it. But I, I will say this. One of the biggest surprises for me was... When we walked into this, we said, we don't care what anyone says. That's not why we're doing this. But it turns out it's, it's quite fun to get a good, nice comment, to get feedback from people who like the videos. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're talking to people, Gustav Runender, who's one of our Patreon supporters. I'd rather have the, the chat. I, like, I, I enjoy, he and I have talked about Vienna Connection, and I've, he bought it and played. Like, it's fun to get feedback mm -hmm. from people who've watched the videos. I'm not sure why. It's just our human nature. Well, I think, like, now we're in this era of, like, 
ultra connectivity and you know i'm not good at it at all you know and uh, well neither of us are social yeah, media people we right. don't like and that and it's kind of nice to be like in a format like this you know like when we did the live lord of the rings thing it was kind of cool to be like i'm just you know like somebody was like oh is this like a viable it was just like being able to sit in a coffee shop and be like I like this game. Like, what are you playing right now? And like, oh, I've had been having trouble with this archetype. Oh, have you tried this? No. And I've had trouble with this. Oh, and they, they give me some advice. So it's kind of like this cool, like, you know, it's like you're just able to talk to people about stuff that you're interested in. Yeah, it it um, it reminds me. I thought one of the goals of the channel is sort of to find our tribe, to mm. find the people who connect with us on these games, who sure. who we speak, and when they listen to our reviews say, oh, I can imagine playing games with that person. You know, everyone's got different tastes. No, we're not going to be to everyone's taste. But maybe we'll find a couple people that, you know, mm -hmm. wish they could play with a group and we're a match for your group. Um, the other, let's see, where did I jump around? Um, sorry, I've got my list here. Um, the other thing that I found that I was surprised about with the channel is doing the live playthroughs, and we're doing a live stream now. It's kind of exciting. There's something fun about doing mm -hmm. it live. You did a live Q&A for Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. That was fun, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was fun. I just yeah. got finished doing it. All right, so I've got a little slide mm -hmm. here of okay. some contrarian advice. Wow. These are gonna, this is going to be advice that you will not hear elsewhere. This is the opposite of advice you're <laughs> normally going to hear. Okay. Here's my advice for people who are thinking about doing something like this, making a YouTube channel, either oh. by yourself or with someone else. Okay. And everything I'm saying is for the people who aren't the natural charismatic people. Like you watch on YouTube occasionally, you get these people and they're just completely watchable. If that's you, you don't, you don't need any of this. Okay. Just go do your thing. But if you're not, here's what I would say. Don't worry about goals. Don't worry about figuring out why. That was one of our, we have no idea. We did not know why we did this. There was no good reason we did this channel. We did it because there were little voice saying, maybe it will be interesting, do it. Mm -hmm. So this, so my, my, number one, don't worry about why or have goals. That's contrary to what most people would tell you if you want to achieve something. Don't worry about getting viewers and subscribers. Um, give up the idea of making money from this kind of work. Um, view it like going on a trip to a foreign country or view it like taking a course in something just treat it as a throwing yourself into this new experience to learn there's a lot to learn especially if it's out of your comfort zone that's the part that i found most rewarding so just go into it to learn just throw yourself into it make videos doesn't matter if anyone watches them and here's another little piece of counterproductive <laughs> contrary advice Spend money up front to get good lighting and good camera and good audio because if you don't get that, it's going to be unpleasant for anyone to watch. Again, this is all contrary advice, like go someplace else, listen to the common advice, and then this is the opposite side of that coin. Mm -hmm. um, and then just experiment and, and squeeze all of the learning you can get out of it. Mm -hmm. Do you think we've squeezed all the learning out of this? We well, can't. You've gotten quite a lot out of it. I don't. I, I feel like I have gotten a lot out of it. I'm not. We're in the ten percent now. We're squeezing yeah. the. I would, if any advice for people starting a channel or something, I would say like, if you like board gaming, you're not increasing your board gaming. You're actually exchanging your board gaming hobby for a filming hobby. That's a great point. And that was kind of like one of the things where I was like, that was. I remember you were like, do you want to? Will you do this project with me? And I'm like. I'll do it as long as it doesn't impact gaming. And then you're like, okay. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing in your mouth was like, I need a couple months off of gaming to like get the channel together to ready. And I'm like, uh. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> it is true. And there's a whole yeah. bunch of warnings. Like we've talked about when you play a game on camera, is it the same experience as playing it's it off camera? Total bandwidth thing is. Different trouble. people are going to be affected differently. But I would st still say go rush into it, just do it, and then reevaluate. I think one of the things we've decided is we're going to try to play some more off camera. Make sure we don't lose that part. And the other little piece of practical advice is checklists. Like we've got 20 checklists on Google Docs about pre-filming checklists, live streaming checklists, like just embrace that. That's a good life lesson in general. Okay, 
next next up on our list before we start talking more to the channel is some changes going forward. So I mentioned a little bit. We're going to try to play a little bit more off camera to make sure we don't lose out on the fun that we've been having playing. So maybe we'll relax a little bit about the filming schedule. Um, you know, there may be times where we have a burst of episodes and then some slow times. It's not what YouTube likes. YouTube will put us in the basket of deplorables for not having two videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but we might relax that a little bit, maybe a little less uh, playthroughs than we've been having. I feel like we're a little playthrough heavy, and but more reviews, but maybe I'll keep doing the detective mystery solo. What do you think about that as far as going forward? Sure, yeah. I mean, Greg's schedule changes sometimes and he's got shows and stuff so we'll work a, we'll work around that but maybe you'll see a little less predictable hopefully that's acceptable mm -hmm. all right let's talk with the channel and see if there are any questions and then i've got a little game to play with greg okay and the channel also but mainly with greg um any questions from the chat there are lots of things i'm curious i'm curious if people like how they discovered us and uh what if they have favorite videos but if you just want to talk about yourselves that's fine too or your favorite games what games you're looking forward to anything from the the channel any other questions at all <laughs> I don't go ahead tom go let's let's what that's yeah. the whole point of it being they're gonna alive, be lord uh, of the rings, whole, gonna be lord that's, of rings. that's the reason it's a it's like a uh, live, right? Otherwise, we wouldn't need to be alive. Uh, you so, can go for it. Fire, go for Lord of the Rings. These can be Lord of the Rings. You're okay, so we should read this out loud. Okay. You're on a cruise with your best board gaming buddies, and this ship is transporting every board game ever made. Wow. So, in like 1995, that wasn't such a big deal. <laughs> like in 2021, a lot of board games. This ship is like, what's the ship that got stuck in the? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't remember in the Suez like Canal. That thing, uh, uh, Okay. Uh, it's about to sink and maroon you for months, maybe years, maybe the rest of your lives. Uh, you know, I thought about this the other day. Yeah, this, I is, had a, this, this is the I kind of question really, that board gamers yeah, think about, sure, like if you only had one game. But I was thinking about this. Interesting. I'm going to pause that uh -huh. question. Uh, like okay. We're going to do a little tangent like we always do. Uh -huh. I was thinking about it. I was like walking down the hall at work. And I was like, you know, if something happened outside, it's because... There was a tornado warning, and and my wife texted me, and she was like, "The sky is orange." And I went outside, and everything was like orange. Mm -hmm. It was really weird. Like everything was lit orange. It was like I I thought it was like it was like it's like in a movie when they change the filter. It was bizarre, and I thought like if we just got trapped in here or whatever, you know, like for, I'm like, could I like from memory write out a pandemic, like draw the pandemic map from That's memory, funny. write all the cities out into cards, because mm -hmm. you could you could you essentially easily make that right. Mm -hmm. The only thing that would be difficult is making sure to remember every single city and the connections are somewhat hard. You know, Hong Kong's connected to five things. But yeah. But could that... you reproduce that and then play it for whatever, right? Mm -hmm. You would know. I, I don't remember how many cubes there are in each thing, and there's that's clearly twenty four. But actually, that's kind of interesting. So, you can only retrieve the games as you pile it into the lifeboat to row to the closest uh -huh. desert island. What three games do you take to keep you and your friends busy in the coming years? Mm -hmm. Separate answers. Mm. Separate answers. Okay, for the record, I'm not much of a Lord of the Ring the Guardian fan, but I enjoyed Greg's passion about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Duly noted on the record of... Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Now, his question, like... Yeah. What are the three games? Just because you can reproduce it in the sand, you still have to pick it here. That's still part of that. You can't, yeah. like, say, I'm not going to pick games I can reproduce. Yeah. So, I mean, like, uh, so, like, you would, I mean, like, essentially, you're not going to get a game, you're not going to pick a game that, like is a legacy or a one shot or something. That's right. You're Even looking though, for games that you enjoy. Yeah, and you that's enjoy a tricky part of this time. question because otherwise you would. Yeah. But you'd also probably want something I like, think I'd pick Lord of the Rings. Like I didn't like it that much, but you have gotten so <laughs> I know that you've gotten so many playthroughs of that well, you, game. I would important. know that I could probably is that a cheat though, because it's like it's like saying like can I have like it's like Gloomhaven. I mean there's so much in that box, right? No, that's not a cheat. I just get your three suitcases, steal okay. that from your So room. I think you I bought would, them on the boat. I'd probably pick Gloomhaven because there's so much content there. And but that is a legacy a long, game yeah and you can keep going and stuff and try different mm -hmm. different ways of approaching the story something like that mm -hmm. and then maybe like pandemic because i know i love it so much and we played it so many times and never gotten tired of it essentially right yeah and then i think i'd pick like uh like something that was fun like like ultimate werewolf or 10 minute open werewolf or something where you could like it's a big social thing and everybody could form some meta or something like that 
Yeah, I, think that's maybe, good. I guess off the top of my head, that's what I would say. Um, yeah, I think I would pick Lord of the Rings, the card game, <laughs> just because so cool. there seems yeah. to be so much content yeah. and you could play it by yourself or with someone else. I pick Pandemic just because it seems mm. to be one of those satisfying games. It's our favorite game. Uh -huh. And for the third one, that's tricky. Um, it's hard to come up with stuff off the top of your head. It is. I just took the easy love. Gloomhaven would be a good choice, and I don't mm. want to turn around. But what if we play it and we just hate it? That's yeah. the problem, man. But, but um, I think I'm, I'm, taking, I'm rolling the dice. We're maybe dice. maybe one of the Uwe Rosenberg games. Mm. Yeah, I was maybe, thinking that too. Maybe um, Caverna. Mm. I generally, I like Agricola better than Caverna, but part of that was because Caverna was so overwhelming with all those buildings. Well, I thought about, like, because we played Aura Labora again a couple times recently, and, like, I do love it, but I could see it, like, after, like, ten more plays being like, okay, like, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm good for a while, you know, like, so, I do love New Sphere quite a bit, though, that's one of my, what we will do, okay. mm -hmm. but yeah, I put my mine, you've got yours. All right. Who's any next? other any other uh Tom, go ahead and you hog the chat. We're we're or we can go to your the next piece Where is here. Sydney Dean? Sydney Dean was the person who sent us micro yeah. macro. Thank you, Sydney. So, um would you like to uh we can answer them as they Move go on? on? Yeah. I could well we could play Greg's question. Uh if the pick is Lord of the Rings, how about storage? Oh <laughs> Gustav was wondering, wanted me to ask you about storage for the for Lord of the Rings. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so you like the binders, Rundar. So if the pick is Lord of the Rings, how about storage binders versus boxes? I know Greg likes boxes. I'm venturing into the world of binders and like it. My problem with binders is just you take them out, you put them back in, you take them out, you put them back in, and it's a big hassle. They look great, and it's awesome to be able to flip through, but it's very difficult for, you know, for constantly breaking stuff down and looking and stuff. So to me, like, boxes were definitely the way to go. Plus, it looks nice on my shelf. I got three big wooden boxes. They're all screen printed with Lord of the Rings on the top. They opened up. Seen Greg sporting a neon demon T-shirt. Yeah, explain, please. Uh, so explain, because that's a pretty niche movie. Nicholas Winding Ruff, Ruff and Fan, random T-shirt. Wow. Okay, so my wife bought that for me because I really love that movie. He's one of my favorite directions right now, actually. He's like the kind of director. If I see he's got something, I'm there. I want to watch it. Neon Demon, I thought was phenomenal. Actually, uh, Jesse and I are thinking about starting a little movie thing where we just do. Very short, <laughs> shorter. Well, you episodes. should you say well, Jesse well, well, don't, and I. Don't this is gonna the, this, yeah, this, is, this is Greg's the, thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but yeah, I love. Uh, I, I'm a huge horror fan. I got the fly on right now. Big horror fan. Uh, that movie's really good. So yeah, yeah. His 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 movies are amazing. Um, uh, you love a couple of his movies as well, right? I don't know. I don't know the directors by name very mm -hmm. much, but. Um, so yeah, I'm a big fan. What else did he do? He's the guy that did a. Uh, 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 um, Mandy. No, um, Blue Ruin and Green Room. Oh my God, Blue Ruin is one of my favorite movies of all time. Drive, the Hall of Fun, yeah. Oh, oh Drive? I, I, yeah. Oh my God. I get him confused Drive with is amazing. Director. Blue Ruin is an amazing movie. I've seen that yeah. four or five times. I Dr love Blue Ruin. Drive Blue is incredible. Ruin. Actually, my, my wife got me also uh, the Drive jacket that he's got. I've seen yeah, that. Yeah, very, very yeah, cool. Yeah, I love the soundtrack for that too. Actually, the soundtrack. Near um, the soundtrack good. of Drive may be the I'm best thinking, soundtrack I, I, ever I, made. I, those are two directors that I really both love both their stuff and I get them confused uh, in my mind. Is there a better Bahal sound? is amazing too. That's one of my favorites. I don't, th I don't think I know that. He does, he does Bronson or does... Uh, Salinero do uh, Bronson. Mm. I can't remember. Again, I love both of them so much, and they muddle in my brain mm. a little bit. Is there a better yeah. soundtrack than the soundtrack for Drive for a movie? It's pretty great, but yes, for sure. I mean, well, it's like from that's... another dimension. Yeah. That soundtrack. Yeah, I love the Hollow is amazing. That's Mad Mickelson. Have you seen that one, Jesse? I thought I saw everything he's done, yeah. uh, I... including Riders of Justice. Yeah, just Bronson, saw, yeah. but I don't think I've seen Valhalla. Oh, it's amazing. It's really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen The Hunt? I keep telling you to watch The Hunt. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. No, no. I've, I've not the new it. Hunt. The, yeah, yeah. The original. Yeah. The, well, that's. Mickelson Hunt. That's a totally different movie. That's not that old, by the way. It's like five or ten years old. Yeah. So, but I'll have to check that out too. Um, I was going to point out, I was going to make a note about Binder Games. There are two games, Mage, Mage Wars and Mage Academy. Both have a mechanic where you go, where all your cards are in a binder, and you can pick from there while you're playing, which is super cool. Yeah, that's a pretty cool. awesome idea. People that don't like, like I didn't draw what I wanted. It's like no, it's all at your fingertips. I love that idea. Like, I've never played it though. But a new game is coming out that just got Kickstarter. ISS Vanguard that also has that mechanic. Oh yeah. And I've kickstarted it, and I'm looking oh, forward really? to playing it. Yeah. Oh, so you've got it. these binders of cards. Yeah, it's a co-op. 
Uh, Tom Chick says, what are each of your earliest memories of board gaming? Hmm. Uh, so when I was younger, we played, uh, you know, we obviously, ever, most people play Monopoly or whatever. And that's, but my first time when I really found a game I love was Axis and Allies. We were like in high school era. Mm -hmm. And we played that like all night one night. Like we played it for like eight hours or nine hours. And at the time that seemed like quite a bit. And we actually, uh, we enlarged because the thing about Axis and Allies, you like have like 4,000 troops in like this tiny, tiny little spot. So we enlarged the map. We had like a eight foot by four oh, foot map. Nice. And uh, we played like, we would play like eight or nine hour games. And you, all my friends would be like, we wake up in the morning and be like, have you just been dreaming about moving troops and tanks around? And we all had like just in our heads were just constantly that. And it was kind of a neat, like having that large board was so cool. And it's the first thing I remember going to like a hobby shop and saying, hey, they have expansions. And there were like unofficial expansions and stuff. There's a lot of stuff. I remember we kind of like kept buying all that to be like, you can put paratroopers in and stuff. And so that was quite fun. And then it was a, a number of years. Everybody's got their like, how did you discover the thing? Mm -hmm. But it was a number of years. And I remember my, my friend, uh, Dimitri, bought like five games and one of them was pandemic and that was like we played it 45 minutes 45, and we played like eight hours one day as well and we were like we got to beat this legend a heroic or whatever legend whatever the hardest level at the time was mm -hmm. and it was like go again 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 and it was so much fun he bought that and he bought dixit and he bought smarty party and he bought um i can't remember now but it was like five games and i remember that was like a, such a that was my like oh like now gaming is like yeah. really evolved and of course we role played and played D, &D and stuff like in a few other like uh role playing games um in high school and stuff so yeah i mean yeah, i, I played board much. games with my family classic board games mm -hmm. like monopoly and all that stuff and then i don't think i played much by the way of board games but i have a very distinctive memory of being in graduate school you know like a decade or two ago and my friend Harlan Harris was telling me about them playing apples to apples, which sounds like a kid game, right? But there was something about the cleverness of this idea of this just completely arbitrary thing where you've got three cards or whatever, and then the people are pitching or picking them, and you have to pick which one is funniest or most amusing to match the mm -hmm. card you have, right? There was something about that that was like, I just, it's like that little, the little twist in the social deduction games mm -hmm. or whatever. It sort of clicked in me like, that is clever. That's a kind of clever mental mm -hmm. amusement. And then I went on BGG and I got interested in modern board games and I ordered what I think at the time were the top board games on Board Game Geek. It was Agricola mm -hmm. and Arkham Horror. Oh, yeah, yeah. And... Both of those got went right out of my house after the first <laughs> attempt at playing them. Like Arkham Horror was so fiddly, I was like, yeah. nope, yeah. do not want this kind of work in my life. Yeah. And Agricola was one of those things I was like, let's just read and play. Like we'll learn how to play as we oh play my it. God. And just it was like, it. no, it was like too confusing. And both of those came back into my collection after a year or so. I was mm -hmm. like, let me try Agricola again. And it, and it became one of my favorite mm -hmm. games. But it was too overwhelming for me in the beginning. Uh, yeah, Tom, what, what, what about your earliest, uh, what did you play? Yeah, let's oh, and then in, we got uh, Runadar is asking uh, current Kickstarter projects, so you just back well, that. Well, we'll we'll talk, I'll, I've got a list of a couple that are interesting, but ISS Vanguard is coming, and I we've just, got a couple uh, more. Siege 6, I'm like, I'm never going to play That's this. That's in my list. But yeah. I'm like, it looks so cool. I love modern war gaming, like kind of like that. Uh, you know, Siege like, 6, tell them what it is. Yeah, it's like it's based on a Tom Clancy uh, game, and I have not played the video game. It's based on a video game, but it looks really cool. Where you're sort of each side is sort of has a it's asymmetrical, so each side has a different one is like kind of protecting and the other trying to defenders and depending. attackers. Okay. Yeah, and it's like and you can buy like it's like forty bucks extra to buy like a the um, like physical component like a, a barricades and sinks mm -hmm. and furniture and stuff. You know, a terrain. There you go. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Certain scenery. And so I kind of want to buy that and kind of make, you know, have like, it just seems neat, but I, I don't foresee myself. My wife doesn't like to play games. It's like not co-op. No. It's that's right. 1v1. It looks yeah. beautiful. It, it looks beautiful. When we played Flashpoint, I remember thinking like a yeah. SWAT version of this yeah. would be so oh, cool. Yeah. And that's what I hoped Siege 6 would yeah. be, but it's, it's. It's a little going to be a little harder to play. What else have we got here? Uh, Milton, did you play anything else in the Milton Blad 
Bradley game series. I'm sure we played most of them with Life and Payday. Yeah, and, I don't uh, remember much, honestly, at this point. I'm, uh, I used to have a very short memory, but my memory gets worse as a year by year. Shogun, Conquest of the Empire, Broadsides and Boarding Parties, etc. No, I've never played any of those, actually. No, and Shogun is the only one I know, yeah. in fact. Uh, Rune, Rune Ender to... says, I would love to have a D&D &D group. Um, I, I don't, that's not for me. So I, that's like a chapter that's done for me. Like it's huge. Dungeons and Dragons is bigger than it has ever been ever. Uh, so I would love to have a D&D &D group. Had one as a teenager and it was fun. Like, I mean, they don't want you to just take this path, but you, I mean, the whole idea of board or D&D, &D, you know, you could buy like 10 books or whatever or less really. And then that is the tools with which to write and play yeah, it's for a lifetime. In fact, that'd be the thing to take to a, yeah, an island. Yeah, that's a good it. idea. That's and a good answer. You just essentially, like for us, we started as like, you know, like just playing like, uh, like, like, like I'm moving this space, I'm doing this. And then it just became like, you, we didn't even roll dice. We just had like an improv session where we we're like, I'm going here and doing this. I mean, so it's, it's huge now. And, and a lot of people play it online and there's like a, amazing zoom app or whatever that like yeah. integrates it and there's some famous youtube channels that play i it. mean it's huge and and so i mean definitely that's a i mean try it again i can't get into i can't mentally buy into it anymore like that's I can't, the problem i have i, I have trust issues i cannot i cannot let the person yeah. be the the it's, dm yeah. and tell me what happens <laughs> i feel like i i yeah. feel like there's they're not obey, obeying the rules yeah. like i need the hard rules yeah. when i my father passed away he had a scuba diving shop I got to scuba dive like I could pay the, the, you know like the the wholesale cost or whatever and go on a trip or something. Went all over the world did amazing dives and stuff and like that chapter of my life is over. Dungeons and Dragons, mm -hmm. that's over and that's okay. You know it's just like pandemic zero, done. Yeah. It was amazing. Now to the next. If part, the DM know? is like roll the dice and then they're like you missed, I'd be like, did I really? Let me see the proof. <laughs> Let me see the thing that it just feels too wishy washy to me. Starship Troopers had an Avalon Hill game, no kidding, in the 80s. Hmm. hmm. Uh, just fine to be able to play it, but I never get into board games. Yeah, that's the problem. When you were younger, you would have like some games or some things, and you and would all like, the time and you would just take the out the components and you would look at them and you'd be like, this would be so world. fun, and you would just never get to do it. Actually, Hero Quest, uh, I played when, like, at some point, yeah. and that, that blew my mind, and it wouldn't be year, many years later till like. Um, I, I really got into games again. Sue Park yeah. says he has a D&D &D group. He calls it Gloomhaven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you enjoying Gloomhaven? I mean, we've got Gloomhaven and Jaws of the yeah. Lion, but we cannot get it played yet. Yeah, it's just a, such a huge, it's a big task. I mean, just just figuring, you know, like I'm, so we have a, I have a table that's, well, this is a custom table as well, but in my house I have a table I built and um, you can take the panels out of it. So it has like a hidden layer. And so my plan is to have Gloomhaven set up so we can just, you can come over and open the, you know, take the top off and then that's set up and you can just start playing. And so that's the kind of idea with a game that expansive, you know, like setting up time and stuff is like a pain. So that's the goal anyway. That would be a good candidate to have like a, one of our Club Con 3 Gloomhaven, like just do three days of Gloomhaven yeah. and really get into it. Yeah, you need to do like a hundred days. <laughs> He's a diver as well. Mm -hmm. Social part of it, um, on only playing solo games now, Runadar. Yeah, I do agree the social. I mean, it's weird. It's like, I didn't want to play. Now you say about playing Lord of the Rings. Like like a friend of mine, actually, I played originally Lord of the Rings with them for a few, a few so sessions. We played for like two days. She came out to visit. And then I said, okay, well, that was it. And I didn't play for a long time. And then when I started, like two years later, I started playing it solo. And I was like, you know what? I don't, she came to visit again. And I said, I'm not going to start playing this with you because... I can't taint the well, like, right? I can't just mm -hmm. play with you and then go back to solo. So it is difficult, but it's great to be able to have, I mean, this is awesome that you can, there's so many solo games. We were just in our local game shop, Titan, and, uh, you know, there, and I was like, wow, it's weird there's so many solo games now. And I was like, oh, wait, no, that's totally mm -hmm. not weird because, you know, people like me that are not big video gamers like, still want to play board games, you know? Yeah, no, I've been playing the detective, the Sherlock Holmes consulting detective stuff solo, and that's been surprisingly enjoyable. Mm. But I will say, like, the idea of playing board games solo is an anathema to me. The whole point of the board games is for the social experience for mm. me. Um, and actually, that was an important moment when I realized, like, I'm, I'm a pretty strong introvert. I don't like hanging... The idea of hanging out with someone in an unstructured environment mm. is a very unpleasant, oh, yeah. anxiety-inducing uh, concept. So one of the things that I loved about board games is when I realized... I could have this social experience talking to someone 
and in interacting with people in a structured way mm. with the rules and the game. Yeah. And that was very satisfying. And hopefully we'll get back to that where you can go to a board game store and just meet mm. people and play games. I've heard very good things about the Gloomhaven app. Lots of people say that it makes it more enjoyable to play. Yeah. Other questions? All right, I'm going to get my, I'm going to get Greg's little game ready. Mm. Let's see. I don't know what's going to happen. Okay. And this is a game for other people to play for. All right. So, so what, do I, what do I do? We spoil, I'm, I'm, I'll tell you what to do, but this, 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 Greg likes these surprise little games. And I had this idea, and it's something that's done on some YouTube channels. It's trying to recognize the game by touch. But I had this idea, I prepared it, I took the pieces out, I put them in here, and then a couple days, Friday, Greg comes over and he's like, I want to play Paleo. So he opens up Paleo and he's like, oh my god, there are pieces missing, we can't play. Mm. And then I realized I should have waited. So Paleo was in here, but it's gone now. Which one of you would win in a foot race? Well, that's an interesting question because I've gotten fat over the last year, but I'm also a runner yes, and I have done some 10Ks quite a bit. But I walked, I actually hit 21,000 steps the other day mm -hmm. was my, so I walk, I think my 12,000, 10 to 12,000, I, mm -hmm. I think is, or 10 to 13 or something like that is my average steps every day of the week for however many months now six months or something so yeah. i've got that but much but you are a trained runner you've been yeah. in the marathon and so stuff, give so. us and a, i'm a little taller so that's right it's that's a good right. this is a good thing to bet on because you don't know who uh, but greg overheats he does not I like, like heat. Not. so yeah. in the summer i think i got a little bit of an edge yeah well maybe that'll be like a challenge that'll, we'll be, that's a good, good that'll race, be a good so. challenge okay so here's how we're going to play this game then we'll get back to questions here mm -hmm. in this box are a couple different sets of game pieces Greg is going to close his eyes and try to identify them by feel. You guys will see the pieces and try to identify what game it is. Are you, you going to like hold it to the I'll do, I'll do it with the top down camera. Okay. okay. So I just sit here and... So I want to start with the easy first. Okay. Here's our first one. All right, Greg, your eyes are closed? Yeah. Okay. So here are the first set of pieces. You guys can answer in the channel because Greg can't hear you. I'm going to give you one at a time to make so it more challenging. Okay. okay? Let's see if we can. What do I do? I'm down. trying to figure out what game. What this thing game goes. is this from? Now you've Are got you an advantage in, in that. Yes. Okay. Here's the first one. First piece. You'll get one guess per piece, it, or you can <laughs> ask for another piece. I know this. Greg it's, is pretty um, good at this. This is related to aphantasia. How well you can visually uh, visual. I mean, like I recognize this piece. Mm -hmm. Like I've held this before. Uh -huh. I know I have. You ready for another piece? Yeah. Okay. I think I Put mean that like, one I'm down. thinking it's like right. okay. Well, I, I have an idea. Okay. I mean oh, You guys at home. Wait, wait, wait. Is this too. is this um Yeah, I know it. It's Forbidden Island. That's right. Forbidden <laughs> Island. But I can't even remember what this you is. Got it from we can I open my eyes or not? Yeah, you can open your eyes. You got yeah, it this, from two so pieces. So I knew I held, held this piece before, but I couldn't like mm -hmm. place it. And then as mm -hmm. soon as I felt this, I knew it was the fire from Forbidden uh, Island. Yeah. That's pretty good. So I got it okay. uh, before the two. You guys too. figured That's it out. Pretty good. Did... No one. Uh, Mark yep. Spitzig good guessed job, it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, I want some peeled grapes. All right, you ready for your next oh, one? A bunch of pasta. That's funny. That's pretty good. What? I like that. A bunch of pasta and peeled grapes. It's like the old thing where they uh, had uh, the eyes and the, the yeah. Grains it's like the whatever. Halloween game. Uh huh. That's All funny. right, you ready? All right, close your eyes it's for the next pasta. one. These are the witch's eyes. Okay. This is the go. mummy's brains. Here's the next one for you guys. Okay. Let's start with this piece. Okay, I mean, just by the shape, okay. You need more pieces? I think I do, yeah. Okay, there's another piece. Need more? Well, this is like, this is really hard, just by feel, to like think, mm -hmm. go through my mind of like, mm -hmm. <laughs> a thousand games. That's an interesting question too, how many games okay, do you here's, a, here's another one, and here's this. Wait. Is this a game that I only played one time? Possibly. Because this is like... An, an you want some more pieces? No, no, no. Hold on. I want to see if I can get it. Is it Stone Age? Is that your guess? That's my guess. No, it's not. Okay, keep, right, hold, hold on. Put oh, it don't, 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 don't. Yeah, give me another one. What is 
I'd like to see if the channel can guess this. Yeah, one. but I'm remembering these glass beads. I know we play. I remember playing with the glass beads. It almost feels like uh, it's not um. I remember these glass beads, but I cannot remember. What Tell it was me when you want another piece. I mean, like, why am I? I'm thinking. Mm. Okay. Hold, up, hold your hand up How's so that, that people. Doing? So Channel is not got this one either. This is this might be a hard one. I should have saved this for last. I I, I mean like, why does it kind of make me think of uh, one of these pieces? Made me think of Spirit Island, and I know that's definitely not right. I do remember this this these things too though. I don't remember what this is. I'm uh, not gonna get this one. Another piece? Yeah. Sure. Okay. I mean I know that those glass beads were in something. I just cannot remember what it was. Uh, I think iron. Want another piece? Yeah, all right. I mean, it's, it's not going to help me. At least it is going to help you. I, I, I just can't remember. I, I mean, I, I know these pieces. I've held this. All right. I wanna g I'm going to give you these, these three pieces. Yeah. I want you to think about those three pieces together. I just, I can't, I can't make them. Well, lay them out on the table without looking at them. Yeah, I mean, I, I know these pieces. I've held them. I, the, mm -hmm. the, the, these, where are they? These, mm -hmm. these, uh, these. I remember the glass beads with something we played, and I'm like. All right, I'm gonna do one thing for you, and then yeah. you can. And then you can. Decide. It's gonna really. I'm gonna really kick myself because That's I know all, all the that that whatever that arrowhead or like, this thing, this. This piece is like very familiar to mm -hmm. me as well. All right, here's these two. Just. What is this? They were assembled in a specific way. I, just, I can't remember. Okay. You want to open your eyes? It's a puzzle piece. I don't remember him. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. This I thought was like an arrowhead. Mm -hmm. I, that's right. The piece for this. I would never remember So what that. is the game? It's a Lance Rising. That's right. That's a hard I mean, one. This is a, that was a hard one. I was going to save this one for us. All right. No one got it, but it kind of looks like Quest for El Dorado. Yeah, it kind of does look a little bit like it. Okay. All right. That was the hardest one. I should have saved that for last, possibly. But this game is harder than it seemed. All right. Close your eyes. We got more. How many of these? I got two more. Okay. Or three more. Okay. Here's, here's another one. Let's mm -hmm. start with... This and this. Here's another one. There are different size blocks. I'm seeing different size. I guess I should be like saying what I'm doing here. So they're kind of weighty. Different size blocks or dice, but I don't feel any dice. Uh, any dice faces. On okay. Them. Yeah, that's useless okay, to me. Here. These are. Also useless to me. Okay, here's another one. Like when you're not looking at them, it's like, harder than you would think. Yeah, it's insane. Okay, this is a person holding a sword. Hmm. I mean, it's obviously a person holding a sword in some way. Okay, here's another piece. I don't remember like that. Oh, yeah. This is one of my favorites. This yeah. is uh, Ghost Stories. That's right. Tom Chick got yeah. it before you yeah. answered. <laughs> you had the you benefit it. of being able to see the pieces. You got that? Yeah, you got it sure. from the Haunter. Yeah, I, for sure. I, I, I wasn't sure which would be easier for you to get it from. from that the Haunter guy was what did that. it, though, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. The, this is, like, useless. It's like, hold well, this cardboard that's token that's in I every other... I to give it to you thing. early. So well, this good, though, for the audience to be able to see that. Mm -hmm. Tom, you like, uh, you like Ghost Stories? Not Tapestry, no. I have not. I wouldn't have known Tapestry. I love All that right. game. Close your eyes. We got two more. All right. Next up, eyes closed. Okay. Eyes are closed. Okay. Oh, good. More cardboard <laughs> tokens. Hopefully, the audience will. Oh, here's some more. I'm gonna give you a bunch of cardboard tokens. Oh, uh, to great. Feel. Thank you. They're different shapes, Greg. <laughs> I'm a, you I'm have like, to investigate whoosh, them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> throw them away. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, like, uh, no. Let the happening. audience see them so they can. There's try to like, guess. Uh, there's in the beginning of that movie, um, uh, Ben Affleck is in it. I don't remember what it's called, but he like assembles a puzzle like with the puzzle face down. So he just buys the yeah, cardboard the, bag. The something. It's Account, called Account. Yeah, Account. Yeah. yeah. All right. And he's like, I'm like, that's not who I am. So. Okay. This is a die. Looks feels like rounded edges. Um. 
This is a small die or a cube or something. Oh, it's good. Wooden disc, wooden cube. This one is distinctively shaped, but I don't know. This is going to be your final clue, so you're going to have to really yeah. think about it. Hmm. This is a standee. Oh, hold on. I think I do know what this is. Wait, give me one of these. Uh, no. Yeah, it's Legends right. of Andor. That's right. It's and, Legends of Andor. Yeah. And Tom, Tom Chick got that. This one, is good. Right? This is a good. Uh, that was good that because was good. It, I needed your hint on that. Yeah. I needed you to say. Like, think this is your fun. Think about it. But it was this. fun when you figured out it's the standee, yeah. and you're like, let me go through all the games yeah. I hate from all the hatred. You'd summon up all the anger towards well, the standee. Well, at first games. I thought about uh, Captain is Dead. Captain is Dead. I thought and then about I was like, that wait, that's wait. Too and easy. I went and I like felt, and I was just like, no, none of these are plastic or whatever. Uh, so that's pretty good. Is that it? Uh, we got one more. One more, okay. Okay, here's our last one. <laughs> yeah. Best and or, yeah. Tom Chick is on, on point here. Yeah. Well, we have lots. We have very love-hate relationship with Legend of Andor, including some real debates the two of us had about it. When we got to one mission, you're like, this cannot be one. And I, mm. I went home and studied it. All right. Eyes closed. Oh, yeah. Sorry. All right. Boy, it's audible. Okay. Down, they're, down, they're down on the table. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is like a cube. It's got hard edges, so it's probably not a, a well, normally dies are well. Okay, ready for the next? I guess so. One of these, they're the same size. And this is a distinctive piece here. What in the heck is this thing? Oh, uh, hold on, hold on. This feels like the tracker for. Well, I'm not guessing this, but it feels like the track. It felt like at first the tracker for um, for uh, Forbidden Desert, but it's not. It's some other weird piece. It is really weird. Like this slides. Okay, give me another piece. Okay. Does this tuck into something? It's really weird. Here's your next piece on the table. I'm like obsessed with this thing. Uh, make sure this is. I can grab this. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Oh, here, hold up. Hold it there. Yeah, putting yeah. it in my hand is the best way. Ooh, this is. Oh, yeah, what is this? It has this weird. This thing. It's like the round tracker or something. You want your next clue? I remember this distinctly something about this. Yeah. What is. What is this thing? Yeah, give me another one. Okay, here's your final clue. Is this going to be enough? Yes, that should be enough. Boy, I just, I just cannot remember what this thing is for. This, this thing is so distinctive. This slides into something I feel. I, I don't know. I can't. Oh, all right, keep your eyes closed. Yeah. Hold your hand. All you need is this one. Just put it in your hand and use it. <laughs> you did a lot of using of that, and there was a lot of laughing and a lot of voices while you were using those. Yeah, I don't remember. It was one of our videos. Our videos and I was doing One of that. our videos, <laughs> there's a lot of laughing going on with those little tokens. This token? Yeah. There's uh, a lot of them. They go through a slot. Oh. Uh, I, yeah, I remember some. I don't remember. I can't remember. Sorry. All right. Any guesses from the audience? No. Nope. They go through a slot. Mm-hmm. They go through a slot. It's limited conversation, limited talking. Uh, uh, is it Mysterium? Nope. I don't, I don't remember now. Well, open your eyes and look. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. I did remember this <laughs> thing. Apollo. Yeah. It's Apollo. It's Apollo. Missions, yeah. Mm -hmm. But don't you remember, we like, the whole yeah. game is throwing these things through the yeah, slot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> ah, comms come yeah. in. Yeah, You've got yeah, a problem yeah, on. Okay, well, hopefully that was fun. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, that was our guessing game. Tom Chick did pretty good. Yeah. All right, any other questions from the audience? Well, what our, is our, Renegade? Is Renegade a good, what is that? I don't know, I'm, that's not on my radar. Where do you see Renegade? Oh, they're talking about Renegade. The dice look like Renegade. Mm. Uh, I don't think we do know it. Renegade, okay. Well, I'll in all fairness, that. we did not invent the game. There are some, there are some good YouTube board game channels that have been mm. doing it. Okay, cool. Well, I think I, I feel, did I get, I got most of them? You got most of them right. I'm really surprised you didn't get Apollo. Yeah.
Hmm. Rickroll, Mage Knightish, but Cyberpunk. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, I'll look into it. Oh, that's the game that Ricky Ricky Royal has a channel. He plays lots of solo games. Mm. It's a great channel. One of the old school channels mm. of board games. And he helped design a board game. That's right. I remember that. I remember that. that so that's right. <laughs> Kevin is like, standees is greater than miniatures any day. I don't know if I'd agree with that. I do not. I am. I am. Uh, I am very rapidly turning against miniatures. Mm. I like them. I like what they add to the table, but mm. I do not want to store them. I'm tired of these Kickstarter games with 200 one, miniatures yeah. that you play once in your entire life, and then they just occupy four boxes. Well, the thing is, I don't like it's is that like, like that. they they come with those plastic trays where you put all of them neatly in there, and it's like it's a pain to like. I don't want to put them all the way like that, so. I don't know, it's a bit of a... And sometimes yeah. they're not labeled, and you have to spend 10 minutes figuring out where to put Um I'm trying to remember what games I watched Sarah. by Ricky Royal. That's Sarah. Mm -hmm. She's sleep. Sleepy bye. All right, more questions. Let's hear them. Well, what's next on the uh, on the agenda, though? If they, uh... Well, we could give away... Um, we could give away Detective while you guys are thinking. All right, so actually this would be a good time since I since you're... People are in the channel. All right, so we're going to try to use this little tool I wrote mm -hmm. to give away. Let's see if this works. Oh, it's not going to work. Channel ID. Hmm. Okay, that's not going to work then. Jesse's that... entered the matrix. <laughs> I, I I could try to edit it, but I have to get up. Maybe maybe. This would be a good time for our break. A little uh, five-minute break. Okay. So we're going to take a five-minute break. Then we'll come back and we'll be answering questions. You guys think of good questions to ask. Um, what are games we really don't like? Oh, we have some answers to that. But first, we're going to take a five-minute break. And we will see you in five yeah. minutes. Thanks for joining us. Thanks we'll be right back. Us.
Welcome back. You're watching Co-op for Two, broadcasting live from Champaign, Illinois. I'm Jesse. I'm here with Greg. Hello. <laughs> and we've got our... Uh, thanks for having me on the channel, Greg. Know, but this is like a five-minute break. Okay. okay, so we've got our six-month anniversary oh, yeah. Are cupcakes. Are you going to light this candle? No. No. It's too... I can't have smoke in here with the okay. equipment here. Um, so we're going to have a little bit of this. We're going to give away detective and then we'll we'll chat a bit more yeah so jesse had uh wrote a program which he's normally quite good at but apparently it didn't work out this time yeah it went into the matrix yeah. um so we wrote down a number right here everybody in the chat uh if you whoever puts the number that's closest it's at one to a hundred one to a hundred does it is price of right rules can they go over you can go over okay. closest just one the closest one whether it's more than or less than uh -huh. and if there's a tie we'll just do it again and here's what we're giving away detective city of angels which is this big coffin box and big, then it's yeah. a little expansion now we did a review we it wasn't for it wasn't us for, yeah. this is this is a used copy obviously. this is a used copy lightly that's right not copy. very lightly used mm -hmm. um and it ha uh, you have to be in america though because i'll pay for the shipping but you have to be in america um okay let's see here come the guesses anybody else i think we had a uh, runadar Rune, runander runander i'm terrible at that uh was another one was uh joined us here but i don't see uh we'll give it another minute here mm -hmm. <laughs> no love for sweden sorry Gustav was a Gustav Runender who I've been talking to oh, yeah, on our yeah. Discord, and we've been having a lot of fun. He just, he just played, he just um, bought Vienna Connection and mm. played Mission One. We've been talking quite a bit, and um, he joined Patreon at a ten dollar a month, and I was like, "You cannot do this! I can't let you do this!" <laughs> so I did talk him down to three dollars a month, but we really do appreciate that the Patreon support, although. I think maybe we'll stop asking for it. Like, it's more fun to have the interaction than the, than the money. I'm just looking at the questions you're talking about. The oh, yeah. Let's see what it Oh, wait. Well, first of all, the, the, everybody's waiting with bated breath. I'm just thinking giving me another minute, but I think yeah, that's let's everybody's... Give, no, let's give them a couple more minutes in case. So if anyone else is here and wants to win Detective City of Angels and its expansion, Greg has explained the rules. There's a number under here. Is that it? We just got three people? Well, I think that's it. Yeah. Drum roll. Evan, Tom, and Mark. Okay. Okay, Jesse. Okay. The, the answer is, is 80. 80. 80. So it looks like Mark, Mark Spitzig is the closest one mm -hmm. to the number. All right, Mark. So um, you can send me your shipping address. Um, don't put it, obviously, in the chat for everyone to see. But you can send it to coop for two at gmail dot com. Sorry, guys. Forget about the giveaways. It's not. It's not important. I mean. Okay. So uh, have a little cake. Uh huh. But before Greg gets to eat his cake, he has to eat his other thing that he insisted on taking from no, my we'll wife. Do it, we'll do it. No, no, do it no, now. Next time, next time. Do, it, do it now. Do it now. <laughs> do it now. <laughs> I'm having my cake. It's the frozen. Is that a? All right. Shall we? You want to explain to them what you're refusing to taste, though. You're... No, next time. Okay. They're, so, they're going to be curious. Are we? Uh... I, want... are gonna... I was wondering if there was going to be some gaminess to people guessing yeah. what the number was. Yeah. That was a pretty good guess. Sixty-six. Rebecca is now trying to enter with twenty-three. It's too late, Rebecca. Too Rebecca, late. one of our co one of our closest friends, who lives nearby. Rebecca just had her birthday yesterday, and Gustav Ro Runender has his breakfast at <laughs> his birthday today. All right, you want to eat your cake now? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. Okay. Is, that, is, this, is this the finale? I don't know. You're kicking me under the table. I know that that's supposed to that mean was, something. You said, but you said you, when don't you say it's time to wrap up, you said. You said, yeah, kick me under the table. Yeah, we We're okay. not going to wrap up. We're going to be here for a while now answering questions. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, a couple questions dropped while you were away. Scroll up. All right, we're going to have our cake, though, while we're waiting for more questions. So my wife made this, but I think I froze it, too. It is definitely frozen. It's orange. Mm. Orange chocolate. Mm, it's pretty good, I think. Orange mm, chocolate cupcake. 
I can't really scroll up. You guys are gonna have to tell me again what they what the questions were. What questions did we miss? Here's some questions for you guys to think about. Drinks up the table. Um, I've spilled stuff on games before. I have these caps I use for soda oh, cans yeah, that's neat, yeah. that are pretty nice. You put them on it and you unscrew. What do you guys think about solo RPG games in book forms? You make choices and skip to certain pages to continue. Yeah, that's kind of interesting because like that's the kind of game where I feel like I want to really love it. So, all right, so I'm on the road all the time. And for a while, I thought, like, I wanted to find some kind of game that would be interesting to play on the road. And then there's a lot of, like, sort of novels, like you were talking about saying there, mm -hmm. where you, it's like a choose-your-own-adventure, but you sort of keep track. You write a number down, like, if you found a potion or something, you write the number 61 down, and it will say, if you have this number, do this X, Y, Z. Much like something else we played recently. Oh, um, a lot like Sleeping Gods, actually, does the same kind of sort of thing, was this, mm -hmm. if you have this number, go to this page or whatever. Mm -hmm. but um they're not very i don't know it's like they're not that good uh, the ones that I, I remember buying a couple like little novel type things that do that and i just could not find something good and i really wanted something good for the road we sort of settled on a game that you quite like which is black stories yeah. but um because that's quite easy for one person to sort of mm -hmm. you know ask the driver you know the driver can ask questions or whatever um but uh no i i found very little luck with that i would love it if there was something good because i feel like that's sort of a kind of a nice thing that you can, you know, I mean, without, I mean, Sleeping Gods does it, it's a game, but that's like a part of the game, whereas it's not the whole game, but unfortunately, no. Um, I'm not that familiar with any, but I do know that uh, Marco Wargamer, now his channel is Marco Omnigamer, mm. hmm. he's big into those games and he's reviewed quite a few of them, so I would suggest checking out his channel, and he's also very insightful, you've watched some of his videos, like he's very smart. Mm -hmm. Like what he says about games, is it's interesting to listen to them. So I may, might check out his channel for that. And then there are a couple of um, new games that have played off that, like the graphic novel mm -hmm. ones. Remember there's the one where there's each that. person gets a different graphic novel. Sounds amazing. Crusoe Crew, I think it's called. That's exactly what it is, Crusoe Crew. It's like, it's not quite what you're talking about. But essentially, like, there's four of you, and like, there was some, there'll be something like your book is different than everybody's and like if you're like a tall person then your book will allow you to see something that's like taller than everybody else mm -hmm. it sounds amazing and I'm really looking forward to trying it but it does seem like it's the kind of game that's um, uh, it, maybe it's geared for a younger audience which is yeah. my only like there's also a whole set of graphic novel choose your own adventure find the things in uh, find the hidden numbers on the page by Van Ryder Games, the same people who made Detective. And they have a whole set. They've got like a Sherlock Holmes one, mm. a sci-fi one, and they're currently kickstarting, so you might want to oh, check out that. I'd like to look that, that up too. What is it called? I don't know the name of it. You I know it's Van, Van Ryder. Ryder. It's like a whole series of graphic novel yeah. games. Oh, I did hear about this actually. Yeah, I'd like to look into that because that does sound kind of interesting too. Yeah. I always like things that are like with movies. We were talking about movies before. Surprise. But I really love originality. In gaming and and well with everything really I mean there's just so much you know obviously it's nice to go you know I'm, I love going to see Marvel movies they're, they're gonna be the same <laughs> it's like the same thing over but I like it you know it's kind of like there's something enjoyable about knowing what to expect um, and enjoy knowing what you like but also I love originality and so like I, that does seem like an area that is not yet been mined uh, well, I want to make one more comment about that question about these RPG choose your own mm -hmm. uh, adventure games I have found, like, when I played Gumshoe, this is this 1985 game, there was a real distinct enjoyment of playing this game that's old mm -hmm. and traveling back to that time. And there are some very old versions of these kinds of games. And if you find that enjoyable, you could just pick up those blinds and just enjoy. You're not enjoying it so much for the game game, but you're enjoying it because you're going back to, like, the imagining how this person created this game in the 80s when there was nothing like this around. Like, you're just looking at someone's, one person's design. It, it can be very enjoyable just to have that that trip down memory lane. Hmm. Um, 
And then reviewing game peripherals, I love that. Like I'm always on the lookout for stuff like that. What's the question? So where do you guys, uh, would you guys be interested in reviewing gaming uh, peripherals as well? Anything related to cars and tabletop is? Are you talking about, oh, I think I misread that question or misinterpreted it actually. I was thinking uh, you were meant like, I was thinking you were thinking things that like, sort of you could use in your tabletop experience like that aren't like games themselves. Uh, maybe I was thinking like because we use those metal cubes all the well, time. Well, we're gonna do a video about blinging out your games. Yeah, but you're, I mean, just in general, in, in having a game room, like we have that die that's got G and J to, and mm -hmm. now I had one made. Uh, you sent me the link, and I have it's just uh -huh. says Greg and From Joe, which is my wife's name, and you can roll and that, and you can see who's gonna go first. Just there's a ton of stuff like that that really I find to be quite helpful. So, but yeah, we're gonna be talking yeah. more about that stuff. In the I future. think in general, both of us have a sort of little bit of a negative feeling towards some of these like when 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 a kickstarter of the game tables come out you'll see on every video board game channel mm. they'll do a paid preview for this game topper or they got this free mm. I, that does do not feel pleasant to me to watch like i don't want to be on even if i like it i don't mm. want to be shilling for someone's product so. well i liked them um, well i like finding it like i i uh like I look at Etsy quite a bit and like I'll, if I like a game, I'll be like, oh, maybe there's something on Etsy for it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'll look and I just bought a thing came today, like uh, from Real Foundry, I think it's called. But it was it's for Marvel Champions. Mm -hmm. You like it's like sort of a dashboard. You can put your stuff all in there and it's sitting up nice for you to see. Uh -huh. And anything I love, I love stuff like that, because when you see like, you know, when you see something that could be quite useful for you, it's it's exciting. It's oh, like well, it's great to tell someone about someone, yeah. some small person who doesn't have enough attention and mm. needs some. But I don't want to be on the other end of yeah. getting the paid preview stuff. Yeah, that so doesn't interest us. Did you ever buy a game you ever thought would be bad just uh, just for the theme? I did that with Planet of the Apes a couple of years ago. I've not heard of the Planet of the Apes game. Um, <laughs> although, like, I generally am the person that avoids. I'm like, that's going to be terrible because of the theme. But I had been suckered into it recently a couple times because like we just did fast and furious recently like mm -hmm. it's like the theme like mass market ips or whatever are now coming out with good games and so it's hard before you'd be like oh it's like a star wars game it's gonna be terrible but now it's not the case and so it's very hard to check out and in fact the planet of the apes made me think of was there was like a terminator game that was kickstarted like like a I don't know, five or six years ago. And I'm like, I wonder how that, if that was any good or if it was terrible because like there's some movie IPs like Planet of the Apes. I love the, mm -hmm. that series. Well, there's I mean, I a, love the, well. There's a weird thing that happens when you start to do a channel. I know we're not the only ones who fall into this, but you're like, a bad game could make for an interesting video. So there's a little bit of a temptation to buy a game that you know is going to be bad just, but we're trying to avoid that. Mm -hmm. Like we won't play a game unless we think there's a good chance we'll like it. Yeah. Uh, I think if you if we got a lot well yeah I mean uh, like people like Firefly came out and like that game came out and, and that's mm -hmm. a an IP that people really love and I remember like people there was like half the people were saying like it's terrible and the other half were like we love it and I think that those people just wanted to love it because they love Firefly and for me like I I got the game's got to be good you know and like yeah. if I hear that you know like and and it's the same th sort of dynamic that exists now where people will be like. They'll be like, this Kickstarter came, I invested in it, so I'm going to like the game no matter what. Like, I'm not, you know what I mean? And I feel like I'm a different kind of gamer, so I, I, I really try to find a game that's well, well designed. Someone asked us about games that we did not like. We, I, we've done two games on this channel that we really hated. <laughs> one was Deadline. Yeah. And the other one we just filmed, yeah, and it's just yeah. waiting to go up, yeah. so we shouldn't say anything about that. But you'll see that this, this coming week. Um, uh, how can I convince my friends to play more co-ops with me? It's hard to get uh, into a game alone, but I still like them solo. I love the FFG LCGs the most. So this is like a really like this is like a life philosophy kind of like like the way you go about doing certain uh -huh. things and like like you know my wife's always kind of like why don't you bring some games to play with the family? I'm like they don't want to play. If they want to play, they'll ask me. You know like I don't. I'm a big fan of like don't push what you want to do on other people, mm -hmm. and I feel like. I guess you should maybe ask yourself, like, do do I think they would enjoy it? Do I just want to enjoy it with them? Like, what's the motivation here, you know? Like, and if it's something that they would enjoy, like, I don't know if they're gamers or not, but, like, it's hard to sort of, like, be like, I want to do this, and so I'm sort of going to want to make you do it. And that's not really a good feeling, and that's not really a good sell for people. 
Um, if they like regular board games, maybe they like the competitive nature of it. I was talking with um, a tour guide we had, tour guide. <laughs> you just can't say certain words without yeah, doing Yeah, that's got a thing. whole story to it. So, but, uh, you know, we were discussing board games. You know, it was kind of neat. It was like, oh, wow, you like board games? And we had we were on this trip, and he was like, yeah, yeah. We spent a few days with him, so we ended up sort of talking about different things. And he's like, really liked them. And he was like, I don't like co-ops. He's like, I like, I like to win the game, you know? And there's a certain competitive, you know, like, there's people that play because they like to be the best. They like their competitive type of person. And then there's people that just like to enjoy the game. I and mean, everybody's got a different reason for approaching it. And it might be that your group of the people that you're talking to really enjoy the competitive nature of it. They don't want to work with other people. And then, of course, there's another, the other thing is like some people don't like to be in a situation where one player is quarterbacking it. Or maybe they, they want to quarterback it. Nobody's listening to them. It's, it's a touchy thing. So, I mean, it just depends on what's good for your group. Unfortunately, it's... It sucks if you want to play a certain kind of game and they don't want to. But it's like I tell my wife all the time, like, she'll be like, I'm sorry, I don't want to play that game with you. I'm like, it's okay. There's like 20,000 games. Uh -huh. it, we don't have to play this one. And the nice thing is, is that a lot of the games, like the L LCGs, like, they are totally soloable. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's a way to get your enjoyment out of it. Um, I, I want to take a crack at answering this a little more specifically. I think co-op games are special because you really have to have a group dynamic that works in a way that is not true for competitive games. Competitive games, people can sort of go up, play it in their own way, and you can have fun as a group. Co-op game, you really have to find someone who's on the same wavelength as you. So I, I don't think it's the kind of game you can convince someone to play. But from our experience, what I would say is try to find one person to play a new co-op that's both new to both of you. Try to play that. Just one other person who's interested in a game, maybe on a board game forum in your local game shop. Try to find a game you're interested in and ask if you can find someone who hasn't played it yet and wants mm -hmm. to play it with you. And have a little tryout. It's like a trial. You're playing it together and you're seeing if you click on it. Yeah, we actually... so. Our first time playing a game together, like because we had, when we first got to know each other, I was like, "Well, let's." You wanted to try. I don't know how it came out, but Arkham Horror, the card game. We both wanted to try Arkham Horror, and I've already game. played the first three scenarios, oh, which come right. in the base box. And I didn't want to ruin any sto story or ruin the experience for myself, so I thought to myself, "Aha! I've already played the the core sets, three missions or whatever, three scenarios." I thought I'm going to play these with Jesse, and if it doesn't work out, I've lost nothing. But if it does work out, we can we can go on to the Dunwich Horror, which was the second mm -hmm. set of uh, second campaign or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just dip your toe in with the with the initial missions or whatever. But it, finding somebody that like will like uh, L L C G or something is great because then you'll have a continual group to go for. And of course, as you say, the I mean, there's Meetup is a great website to find people. Uh, you know, Craigslist is yeah. another way, and you know, there's all sorts of online options. And you're not going to click with everyone. It may be that your current friends are just not going to be compatible yeah. for co-op games. Try to find one other person to play it. What about this? How about, uh, is there an IP you wish had yeah. a board or card game well, for it? I just mentioned like Terminator is like, I'm not a, I like Terminator 1 the best, then I like Terminator 2, and then I don't want to watch any more Terminator movies ever. Like I don't, I'm, I'm not. I haven't seen the newest ones. Like mm -hmm. they just keep they're terrible. Pro the first two are amazing. I don't prefer them myself, mm -hmm. but I do love the first one and then the second. One. Mm -hmm. But I would love to see, and, and that's a board game. Like I time travel has never really been. I want to try that new one. Um, I can't remember the Loop. name. Of it. Loop. Loop that's got really, really good reviews. reviews. Yeah. yeah. So I'd I like to try, try that. But I, I mean, other than that, like time travel has not been done very well in the game, and it would be tricky to try to make it so that like. It's both a fun game, but also, you know, like, it, it is true to the IP. And so I think Terminator is a good example, just because it's on my mind right now. But mm -hmm. how about for you, Chris? Well, I one of my favorite computer games of all time is Sniper Elite, and it's a sniper game. And they made a board game of it very recently that I haven't had a chance to try because it's it's 1v1, mm -hmm. basically. But a sniper game appeals to me. And That's not an IP, though. I'd like to see a larger war game, co-op war game. Hmm. It would be nice. Like, it's kind of cool. Like, I'm a huge comic fan, and so it's nice to see, like... It's weird because Marvel's been so huge. The MCU has been so huge in recent years. And, like, board gaming hasn't caught up to that. And video gaming hasn't either, you know. Not that I'm a huge video gamer, but, like, I'm really looking forward to seeing, like... You know, now we got Marvel Champions. We've got Marvel Crisis Protocol. 
you know, there's some of these games that are like really start, and there's a bunch of mass marketing, smaller ones and stuff, but it's nice to see these games really start coming out, you know, and you know, like, uh, even so, I love Conan, like, uh, you know, I've just started, re I just started painting Conan, the, I have uh, the King's Pledge of the, of the Kickstarter that, um, so, like, there are some really IPs I like that I don't even think about, and I'm like, oh, wow, and, and it's cool to see Dune starting to come up with some stuff, because Dune is a great IP, mm -hmm. I've only ever read the first book, and seen, seen the David Lynch movie, so, uh, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing some stuff come out with that, which is neat, because it's like the houses and the intrigue and stuff, there's quite a lot there, I think, and the sandworms, obviously. You hate them. I hate them. Anything else? Any other IPs? Mm, no, I can't think of any. Um, I wouldn't mind more Star Trek game. Well, isn't there like that? There's like the it's essential one that was like... There's Mage Knight. There's, like, there's that Frontiers or... There's one where you like basically... That's like, right. There's it seems Frontiers. overwhelmingly... Huge. Ascendancy, that's it. Mm -hmm. They like debuted it at like some Star Trek convention. Yeah, like, that's the one with the different... You can connect them with different light wow, things. Wow, yeah. That seems like... Mm -hmm. like a dream for a Star Trek fan, but not. I'm not a. Well, here's here's Kevin saying something that you and I do not agree with. He says, "I like when a co-op has a betrayal mechanic, like Mansions of Madness. Mm. Those usually make for really great table stories. I can see that, but mm. that just that does not. I do not enjoy that. Yeah, group. I think it's in, hard to no. get it to work right. The person we've talked about, like Betrayal House on the Hill, the person who has to be the betrayer has to go figure out new rules. Yeah. It's hard to play with non." When not everyone is a real gamer. For sure, it will. It's it's a story based thing, but you know, Jesse and I have sort of this joke about like how it's like every game is like, hey, like let's just put a betrayal thing in there. It seems like a no, like like just like the throw in the throw in there so you can write it on the box. And yeah. often it's not something that really works well for the game. Like Pandemic is a legendary example of that, where it's like, why is this bio, bio terrorist in here? Yeah. And you know, we talk about like when a Kickstarter will have like they'll say it's a solo mode and a competitive mode and a cooperative mode. Yeah, that's and usually just, a red flag. And you just think that you're like, and none of those will work very well, you know? So, <laughs> uh, and that, again, that's just our preference or our, our where our taste is, uh, uh, experiences like led us to believe that. So, um, mm -hmm. if you enjoy that, that's totally cool. It's just not for us. Uh, Gale Source 9 has worked wonders with Firefly, Homeland, Sons of Anarchy, and Spartacus. So I'm not a huge, I don't, uh, this makes everyone that I tell very angry, but I don't watch TV shows. I watch, watch mm -hmm. movies. And so, uh, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I've not, watched any of those shows i did watch firefly when it came out many years ago as a you know what weird fan. ip that we've been wanting to try is Davio's uh thunderbirds game oh yeah just yeah. because we're well, a fan of his uh no, not Davio. it's leacock leacock That's matt, right. leacock, matt yeah. leacock yeah i mean i love we've talked on the Superman channel game. about the idea that davio is the yeah. person making these games worse mm -hmm. possibly but but I do want to try that. I have no interest in the IP, but I do want to try that. Uh, Jesse, do you know Quartermaster General? I don't. 3v3 Game World War II. That sounds good. I would like to play more team games. Well, there's a very big lack of team games. That's one of the things where I'm always like, man. They, and I think it's because like, it is difficult to get enough people together to play a team game and also mm -hmm. that everybody knows. things. It's, a game company wants to put as many player counts on that box to sell it. Mm -hmm. You know, we were in the game store today and we looked and we saw Dune and it was like, oh, cool. Like, and I said, well, we finally got a couple of people to play with. And mm -hmm. I thought, oh, maybe our friends Beck and Chad would play. Mm -hmm. And then it's like one to four. And I'm like, yeah, well, we have five players. And weird. I've never really looked at it before because it's usually like, will this play with two? You know, like, so. Uh, it would, games should have, board games should have a little note if a game would be good, if you could play teams as those if it works well with teams like there's some games we played qe that's a perfect game for teams yeah so even though if it goes for one to five it's really I, two to ten i think it's the most underrated uh under excuse me it's the most underrepresented that's totally different total totally underrepresented part of gaming like is that is is team games. and it I mean, seems like, like there should be few. more because they give you the best of both worlds they give you a feeling yeah. of cooperation and a feeling of that's competition. exactly right the game that i always recommend uh is team play yeah it's a wonderful little card game with goals. Highly recommended team play. Pick it up. Captain, I watched I saw it on Game sorry. Night. Captain Sonar is another great one actually, wow. but it's a very tough That's to a whole get. Different matter. It's a huge matter to get people all trained up and That's ready. Like but we that. actually that mm -hmm. game is a team game, but we actually printed out the rules to play one on one, and we played one on one. Yes, you and I a did. A couple of games. It had a that few. That was stressful. Yeah, but it had some like wrinkle where like if you hit the per it was like really hard it was like once somebody hit the other sub it was like forget it you're gonna just annihilate them that could be what you're telling yourself greg because mm -hmm. i, I hit your sub and you I <laughs> yeah but it's just very it's very hard it's and i remember reading about that and then i was like oh this is the experience now i'm having so maybe it was a biased thing but i'm usually pretty good about 
identifying like, but maybe uh -huh. not. Uh, uh, quartermaster general, yeah. Yeah, we did that one. Yeah, but I like the I, I like the idea of that. It's There's cool. another. Um, who's the guy who did Cthulhu Wars? What's his name? I don't know. I know the game, but I don't. He's know. famous. He just um, kickstarted War Room Two, a War Room, uh, which looks like a big, massive World War game that can be played in teams. That is very appealing to me. I'm considering it. Yeah, we've got kind of transitioning from computer games, which is a huge part of my life, to, uh, to card and board games more, and it's nice. When something uh, you like on screen also exists off screen. I've really been noticing that a lot lately, like um, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, mm -hmm. like um, Rainbow Six. We just talked about mm -hmm. Siege Six or whatever. Right. Like I think those companies are now realizing, like, hey, there's like these ten million dollar Kickstarters or whatever. I mean, they're realizing you can make some serious yeah, money on audience, it. Right and so they're it. like, mm -hmm. oh, good. And you know, people that are not, you know, that like. It's like they're all they're selling is the idea, right? So Sandy like, Peterson, yeah, yeah. that's right. That was the name for us. Yeah. You know, uh, Rebecca and Chad went above Bloodborne and went all in mm -hmm. on the the board game. So maybe we'll get a chance to play that sometime mm. soon. Uh, Kevin says he sent a few questions to BGG. Did you read them? Uh, I, we haven't read them yet, but they're actually on my list here. Okay. Um, so we can get to them, yeah. but wait, let's talk about this. Let's let's stay here. Mage Knight is another one of these games that we keep mm. meaning to play. Yeah. And the, there's a Star Trek version. No, we can play competitive or co-op. I didn't really think it's got play co-op on that. We had this discussion before, and that's what you said last yeah. time I told you. Well, good. At least I'm consistent. At least you don't listen. Uh, at least I'm consistent. Least... Consistency. You can always look at the positive way to say it. It's I like, it's like when, you, when, you, when you're reviewing people, and so you're like, these are your areas of opportunity, you know? Uh -huh. yeah. But normally it's me that's getting that's yelled true. at for not listening, so it's good mm -hmm. if, I, if I put... Okay, here's Kevin's questions here. Okay, let's hear them. How would you rank the Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective set? Yes, okay, so Kevin um, sent me a note on BGG and he wrote a review of Adventures by Gaslight. So in Sherlock Holmes, you know, there were lots of little one-off expansions for it in the 80s mm -hmm. and most of them got absorbed into these big box sets. Like the Carlton House in Queens Park absorbed a couple different expansions but i think adventures in gaslight have has not yet been absorbed and i read kevin's review and it sounded really interesting it sounded like that it sounded like it gave you that feel of like going back in time like it was it wasn't didn't quite work super well like and it was too hard but like felt epic um, I can tell you which one I think is the least good. Yes, is the what was Jack the... the Ripper one? Is I yeah. think is oh, it's terrible. Very poor. But it was poor. such an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. But it was three missions, telling the Jack the Ripper story, but no answer. So there was no mystery to figure out, and like as random as real life, like difficult, very difficult to get any satisfaction out of it. I've got I've got an unplayed copy of Chronicles of Crime on my shelf. That I think I'll finally be opening up soon if I decide to like it. What do you recommend getting to play more Okay, cases? before you answer that, before you answer that, Chronicles of Crime is at the very top of Greg yeah. and I's Why bother playing rating. any other game of that Well, game? I definitely don't agree with that. And someone in one of the live chats said, like, Chronicles of Crime is too easy compared mm -hmm. to the Sherlock Holmes. But wait, I don't, we don't agree with that. We love it. It's one of the tops. Now, tell them what your recommendations are well, for expansions. I think noir is incredible. As long like, as you're not super politically correct, as long as it won't bother you a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's not like, it's 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 based on like the Sam Spades type stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. and I guess and in the not, '40s and stuff, that's mm -hmm. a different mindset. I guess so. it's really not that politically incorrect, unless you. Well, we won't. Do, well. Yeah, I think there was some pushback from some reviewers that felt like it was a little draconian in its thinking, and mm -hmm. I, I don't like. It's the same thing with like Conan. I mean, like if you open up Co the Conan board game, it's like this big muscular Conan and there's like a very scantily clad woman and it's pulp. I mean, mm -hmm. that's all based on pulp in that time period. Uh, you know, so it might not be for everyone, but I think noir is incredibly well done. It's really cool. And you get a couple of new mecha me mechanisms, which is to like, you can like bribe people or rough them up or tail them and stuff. And I think that's a really cool part of that system. Um, and then the other, um, welcome to Red View. Yeah, it's actually surprisingly good. Um, They're really all good. The, yeah. One of the surprising things about that yeah. series is that they are consistently good. You cannot go wrong. Yeah. There's like two cases I did not like, but I mean, that's that's out of like 30 cases. We downloaded all the, we yeah. played everything. So I mean, if you like it, just buy it all. Yeah. You can, it's They're one of the most consistently edited and polished sets of games. Hard to go wrong. All right, let's see what else have we got here. 
Um, Lord of the Rings, I've ordered the base pack. Do you think I should get two of them to play with four of us, or should we just play two as teams or something? No, you definitely can't play teams. you got to play each... If you're going to play... You get, need two, tor two core sets if you're going to play four players. And I think that you'd have a hard... Well, you could make decks out of that, but they might be, not be the best. Or the... Uh, yeah, it'd probably be a little difficult, I think. Um, I actually... Like, people do play four player, and I think... I'm like, I, I'm like, that would just... My eyes would glaze over. I don't know. Like, I think two is really the sweet spot for that game. If you do... I know there are a lot of successful groups around that do play four player. They get together and play a quest or, and, and, you know, like, as a regular thing, like, the third Thursday in a month or whatever... And they are quite successful. I also find that like four player can create a swingy nature where the quest is too easy or too hard. I think the game really is in tune for two. So, Tom Chick says, I bet you guys would love how Leacock has morphed the pandemic concept in Thunderbirds. Yeah, we could really have to try it. Yeah, I really want to try it. Yeah. No, I can't believe we didn't. I think I just, I've, I've only seen a, a few episodes of Thunderbirds and I love the idea of it. I love Super Marionation. I love puppets. I'm a huge oh, really? fan of puppets. Yeah, I've got one on. <laughs> that's a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like, uh, yeah. Original Demon Souls. I don't know what that is. I don't know either. Other forms of entertainment are sometimes used to express political opinions or perspective books. Have you seen that happening Why didn't you in read board that games? Them? Sorry. Other forms of entertainment are sometimes used to express political opinions or perspectives. Books, mm -hmm. movies, video games, music, etc. Have you seen that happening in board games? It is going to be happening more and more, for sure. There's an interesting channel I would recommend, a YouTube channel, called Shelf Stories. Board game shelf stories, something like that. It's a guy, and he's talking about cultural issues. I don't agree with him completely, but it's very interesting to see that take. Mm -hmm. And for sure, art, art is creeping into board games in a much more serious, interesting way. We've played a couple games that are making artistic statements. A famous one is... Um, the, the one about the runaway slaves. Underground Railroad. Underground Railroad. There's another one... There's another one that's a little bit similar to that, but it's definitely coming into play. This War of Mine was a sort of artistic statement about the brutality of wartime, but I'd like to see more of it. I absolutely would. I, I hope we can see more more viewpoints, more board games that, that tell the designer's viewpoint. Mm. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, as in anything, like any, like the more a hobby or, a, or, a, or, some, or something grows, like, you know, if comics are getting expanding, expanding, and you're getting more, you're just eventually going to get in more, all those corners, right? You're going to like get more. So as board gaming grows, you're gonna they're going to start getting into those more niche areas. It's just sort of a an event, sort of an eventuality. So. I think we're at like we're not going to get political at all, but we right. are at an interesting point in board games where there are people. There's some degree of friction mm -hmm. about games going in areas that people find uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I hope we will get over that point to where people really are having opinionated mm -hmm. games that you might disagree with, you might play and say, oh, it's a mm -hmm. good design, but I don't like the viewpoint. There's some guy that's very famous, Elkland, who, who made some very well-known games that are respected games, but he has commentary that's controversial. But I think some controversy and... Um, some controversy and opinionated games are, would be welcome. I'm amazed that 1960, The Making of a President, is a game. Like, like I've never played it. I've played, you know, uh, that's part of, that's a designer of Twilight Struggle, is that right? Don't know. It might be. But that's, um, it's kind of interesting, because that's not that long ago, you know? And it's, you know, Nixon and JFK. I mean, they're in our life. It's not like it's like, William mm -hmm. McKinley, and most people don't know, uh -huh. like, mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't know his policies, right? So it's kind of interesting to see, like, what side, you know, like, is, you know, that that game actually exists, uh, and, and people play it. It's very popular, actually. It's surprising to me, you know? And, I mean, you, I mean, w w could you have one about, you know, the, <laughs> the U.S., the last couple of U.S. elections? Well, you know, there, are, so, there are, there is one or two. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's kind of surprising to me, you know? So, I mean, but. There is a there is a market for it, and and people seem to be mm -hmm. okay with it. I guess it's it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see going forward. Pol pol politics is part of everything. So, mm -hmm. uh, the Kevin and Rebecca are talking. <laughs> blood, blood. What is it? Blood rate. Why am I not even remembering the mm -hmm. name of the of the game? Bloodborne. But Just, Bloodborne. Yeah. That's right. They're they're having a they're geeking out on yeah. Bloodborne. You guys need to play 1960s. It's a blast. Highly recommended. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. 
I played Making a President in 1960. I got rid of it. I don't remember why. Oh, Sydney's here. Order of the Rings, Order of the Base Pack. Do you think? Oh, that's the one you answered. For oh, is us. it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, you wanted to try it with your family. Yeah. Yeah, I think you definitely need yeah. I guess yeah. I two start. Start two, with two. two Don't start go for it. Yeah. Uh, Kevin says, since you guys love Chronicles of Crime and love Seventh Content, have you heard of Destiny's, the Lucky Duck's new game? Um, no. Yes, I, I I have I have heard of it. It's app driven. It's gotten some very good reviews, but it's competitive. Mm -hmm. It's competitive. It's gotten some mixed reviews, um, but Lucky Duck is so impressed me with Chronicles of Crime. I would absolutely go in for it if it was cooperative. Hmm. Okay, let's mm -hmm. see what else we got. No, we don't have to end it yet, Greg. There will be more <laughs> questions. Got to give them time. We could take a little break if you want to take a five minute break. Yeah, okay. You want to take a five minute break? No. Nope. Okay. You just want to wrap it up, huh? Let's hang around for a little bit longer. Okay. Um, I have been playing. We uh, we actually started playing um, with our friends. We started playing King's Dilemma. Yes, we and did. We actually had a, a five player game of that, um, which I think is a mess. Two to five or three to four. What does it go to? It's Anyway, it doesn't really matter. It goes five, up, goes up, to five. It, up to five, but I can't remember what the lower mm -hmm. end of it is. But, uh, three to five. Um, it's very interesting. I mean, it's it's very intriguing to see what what will happen with it. So it's 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 very odd though because like it seems very simple and yet the rules have like really kind of bogged down our play. Playing it's a little it, which weird. Very strange, it's, but, the rules are weirdly convoluted yeah. in parts, but it's so super simple and. Yeah. I don't have a lot of experience. I with love the psycho or psychological questions it poses, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure there's much of a game, gamey strategicness yeah. underneath. But it is mm -hmm. fun. Music of choice during board gaming. Well, that's interesting. You like listening to music. When I think we that's play a huge games. part of gaming. Like, like I mean, you know, there was actually no. This kind of dovetails with our previous thing about like gaming components or things that can help you while you're playing. Um, Somebody was selling like game sense, like they were like like if you were playing like D and D, you would be able to put these scents out, mm -hmm. and it would be like you're in the market, and it would have mm -hmm. like markety smells or whatever, or like you're near the sea, and it'd be like salty sea smell or mm -hmm. whatever, which is kind of neat. I mean, if you want to really be immersive, and uh, that's kind of a cool idea, and I think music is an easy way to to do that. Um, you know, like we played Aura Labora the other day, my wife and I, and. Uh, I put on like a French, like cl like a um, classic French music or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and it was like fantastic. I loved having that on, and uh, we played the French side. Obviously, there's an iron Irish side as well that you can play, um, but you know, like stuff like that, I think is great. Like adventure music. I mean, now you have YouTube. You can just. I mean, I used to put on stuff on my iPod or whatever, but now I just look up something on YouTube quickly, and, mm -hmm. and I have the um, ad free YouTube. I, I think it's well worth buying that. By the way. It's like eight bucks a month or whatever, and I use YouTube constantly hmm. for music and things. Um, so you put that on in like, a, you know, you, adventure music or, you know, pirate music or what, whatever kind of game you're playing. You can almost always just type something in and find, you know, something to really help out. So. It's funny. I mean, I love listening to music, but I don't really have much of a mm. desire to have it on while playing games. Maybe I find it, it's a little bit distracting. Mm. So maybe, you know, I wouldn't listen to the same music off while not trying to concentrate yeah. as I would. Well, like like uh, like we typed in like traditional Arabian music or something. Uh -huh. when we're playing Five Tribes, and it's just a nice a little background. Little background. Uh -huh. It's really, and it kind of you know it fits the mood a little bit or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know. Here's an interesting question from Sydney Dean about I'm looking mm -hmm. for a game table. Anyone have any suggestions? I'm thinking about just ordering the mat first. Anyone regret their game table purchase? So you built <clears throat> this table. Yeah, I built this table. Um, Here's what I would say. Like, there are plenty of YouTube videos on, on the board game tables and recommending them. There's one game, Toppers, that's just a top, which is very makes a lot of sense in some cases. The biggest improvement is just having a nice mat on any table. And you can get them fairly cheap. So I would suggest you... And the hardest decision for a game table is how big to get for your space. So I would suggest you do start off with a nice mat. Spend 60, 70 bucks. Game Toppers has a bunch of them. We have one more of them. 
Yeah, I think having a mat this is mat, essential. Yeah, yeah because I, you put your finger down to pick up a card. Yeah, so so I, like 90% of the benefit from a table you'll get from having a nice game mat. And there are nice big ones. This one's on Amazon. I'll post somewhere because I like this one. It looks nice and it's, um, you know, it doesn't, it's got a nice pattern, but it's not so busy. Most of the mats are busy. I would get, I would get this one from Amazon or a similar one of the size you think you want your table. And then, and then make the decision about whether you should get a table. It takes up space. If you've got a lot of room for it, then fine. Otherwise, just get yourself a nice mat. I also had mentioned earlier, I built a table and it has a inside part. So you could put a game, leave it set up, put the leaves on, well, clack, that's, clack, clack, that's clack, a good point. And then you can have, use it as a normal table. I have it in my study, so I don't have to do that. But it is nice to like, a nice idea to have an inner compartment and you can leave things set up. So that way, well, that, setup time is a huge that's a great point. If you if you're the if you're the kind of people that would like to be able to set out a game and yeah. leave it set up, having one where you can put the leads on top. Yeah, this yeah. is and we're in the golden age of this because like you can either, you know, there's a ton of YouTube videos where people are like build a gaming table in a weekend, right? Mm -hmm. Or there's a ton of people that are making stuff like where you can just set a top on there and it's done. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, there's a lot of options out there now. A lot. I mean, like exhaustively. So you know. Um. Kevin says, I think the only way to play Destiny's Cup would be two players controlling one character. Well, this is very timely that you've mentioned this because we want to do a series called Does It Co-op? Where we take games that aren't specifically made to be played co-op and try playing them as co-op. And that would be the single player games like we just picked up Falling Skies, which I've heard great things about. And then there's some other games that you had a fantastic idea. Do you remember what your idea was? Mm -hmm. Your idea was to play Seafall and try to play oh, yeah. Seafall cooperatively well, just I, to unlock stuff and see how that goes. That game is suggested to be like a three to five player game and uh, it's never going to happen. And so I said... And hey, it's ter universally regarded as terrible. It's not well regarded, yeah. And, and, and you know, I watched a couple interviews with Davio about it and he was like saying basically, look, I had a lot of high-minded ideas where I would think like, if you go in and you take their resources from this island you found and exploit them, eventually they'll fight you. And he was like trying to make it so that it was very, mm -hmm. like it, it seemed like he was like, look, I want to really make a huge piece of art with this. Like he was really high minded about it. Like very ambitious. Is well, he was, yeah, he was trying to throw everything in yeah. there. And so, but then I read, I remember reading some threads where some people actually played Seafall just kind of like partly with the idea of just opening everything up, but they just kind of played it like where they weren't really fighting it wasn't very competitive they were just sort of playing the game i don't know how to describe it because it's been a while since i read it but it sounded kind of interesting to try yeah. and i did notice too yes uh runadar i did the same thing i listened to ocean waves on when i played my gray havens too mm -hmm. it's pretty pretty neat yeah that makes sense to have music set to the theme yeah. all right any other comments i think um jonathan Coburn well, you says can get he kevin's wife to build your table mm -hmm. <laughs> Jonathan Coburn did was a, a Patreon backer. Yes, Jonathan, thank you. And I thought while we're waiting for some more questions, I made a list of some of the YouTube channels that I watched that I thought I'd be curious to hear what channels people like. Um, ton of hype. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. I, I think mm -hmm. that was the first game I remember on getting that seatball mm -hmm. getting so much hype and then I falling think flat. The, probably the biggest hyped board games that I can think of yeah. off the top of my head. Seafall, yeah. Scythe. Pandemic Legacy Season 1, I think. Mm -hmm. I think those are... like. I, but Scythe and, and Pandemic all lived up to their expectations. Yeah. And that was... And, Seafall completely... Oh, actually, First Martians was, That's was the another one. Huge First hype. First Martians. And it came out, and then it was like... like, And a lot of reviewers were like, they just didn't even want to review it. Like, yeah. So it was... That First was Martians. About, that, yeah. Because that it was hot also. on the trail of Robinson, Robinson Crusoe. Crusoe. Yeah. That's right. Um Okay, so I'm just going to list some of my favorite YouTube channels or board game channels that I watch. And if you guys have some, I'd love to hear from them. One, which I think deserves mention, is Quackalope. Um, the Quackalope and Board Game Co., Alex Radcliffe, they do a lot of videos together, overlap. They're, it's a very ambitious set of channels that are just growing super fast, but they're good. And when we were setting up, when we were getting ready to start filming... Um, I contacted him just to ask him some questions because he had a camera view that looked great of the board showing everything. And he was very nice. Jesse is his name, the guy on Quackalope. He's very nice in sharing some thoughts about 
what camera he used and the lens and showed me his microphone setup. So he's very nice. But he's good. And then, uh, look at Sarah. And then Alex Radcliffe at Board Game Co. does a lot of Kickstarters. There's two videos, two channels I watch for Kickstarter advice. One is Alex Radcliffe's on Board Game Co. And the other one is this guy, King of Average, who's a little more independent. But they're both really good at telling you they cover every Kickstarter and telling you whether it's a good value for money. Um, Nerd Shelves is this couple in Canada that are very charming. They play board games. Occasionally I stop into their live streams because they're just having so much fun playing games together. Shelf Stories, that's the one I mentioned, who talks a little bit about culture and politics. Hmm. Board Gaming Ramblings, that's the couple from... They may be from Germany, but they did a Vienna Connection review... And they like some of the games we like. And they had a different take on it. I really appreciated that. Game Night on BGG. This is one of the playthrough channels I watched when I very first started watching YouTube playthroughs. That's Nikki and um, Lincoln and Aaron and Dave. The four of them. I feel like I've gotten to know them watching them play games. Rob Oren, who's like a curmudgeon guy. <laughs> it's like cringe watching, but I do watch his channel. And Rado. <laughs> We both have a hard time watching, but... I just don't prefer a longer review. I like a shorter review. But he goes through so many games. It's nice to get a look at a game. Dice Tower, Marco, Omnigamer, Wargamer, which I mentioned. And then there are a couple of co-op channels. There's one stop, co-op shop, which is good. And then co-op gestalt has a blog, not a YouTube channel, which is really good. Okay, let's see. We have here some answers here. Board Game Co., Quackalope, Watch It Played. Oh, yeah, of course, Watch It Played. Dice Tower, don't love it. Well, you know, we talk about Tom Vassell, but his reviews are useful to me. You know, this is an interesting point. Um, you don't have to agree with the tastes of a reviewer, but once you learn them, you can make more sense out of the reviews, right? You're like, this person, I know what games they like. Um, awful Hats. I'm just reading Kevin's comment. Too many YouTube channels are dudes with Awful Hats doing magic trips. Tricks that I'm embarrassed if my family sees on my screen. Uh huh. Mage Knight. Any other channels people watch? Hmm. Any other questions you have for the audience, Greg? No, I think I'm good. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like I'm getting virtual kick under the t table from <laughs> just Greg's. <laughs> to Greg's eye. I read to wrap this up in five minutes. We're going to give you five, five more minutes, guys, to have any other last questions. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're going to be doing this in six more months? Will Do we? I? Is this my, your question to me? Yeah, I was talking, that's I, asking I have you. No idea. The future is, uh, that's like a term I think. Do you guys want to see the movie unknown. review channel? Maybe. I'm asking the audience. Do you guys want to see a movie? I guess it doesn't matter if they want to see it because they might not be the audience for One it. One player also has videos from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I think I'm like the elves or Nadar. I'm leaving these shores. I mm -hmm. think I'm done with Lord of the Rings. That's a great question, Tom. I, I, that was on my short list, actually. I was going to ask you guys if you ever go to conventions. Well, I've been to the last three or four Gen Cons with my group here, with Rebecca and Chad and Michael and Larry. And we have tickets to... This coming Gen Con will probably be at the next Gen Con. If anyone wants to meet up. Uh, has anyone in the channel ever been to Gen Con? Gen Con is a unique, well, it's not a unique experience, but it's a special experience if you like board games. Like I remember the first time I went, I was just blown away by how happy everyone was. Everyone was just having fun geeking mm -hmm. out to the yeah. board games. It was, a, it was awesome. fun to just be in that milieu. I wanted to go down to um, a couple times I've thought about Origins. Go, well, Origins, I mentioned to you, maybe trying mm -hmm. that out, which I've never been to Gen Con or Origins. But I thought about going to the board game. Uh, it's in Dallas, right in the airport. You can just fly in and, and check out the oh, really? Board Game Geeks uh, convention, which I wanted oh, to do. That's but it right. sells out like instantly. They do cruises occasionally. Instantly too. sell out, yeah. Uh, Kevin's... Virtual fencing. No kidding. That's a weird thing. Virtual, how do you do virtual fencing? Yeah, I don't know how you do. Maybe with VR? Hmm. I've been looking at those VR headsets. It's getting very that's tempting. Pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm going to be, let's say that's, once that's like, uh, reaches its height, I'm going to, you're never going to see me again. I'm going to be like I in agree. the virtual world. You're going to, I'm going to take them off. My eyes will be all milky. Yeah, I'm going to be like completely, Especially you know, if that, like by the time you hit 80 years old, like just hook, mm -hmm. hook us in, yeah. leave us on the bed. Nice defense, F.A. 
Sid, what do you do? You do uh, FA or uh, Saber or Whale? Yeah, well, Sweden, you're close enough. You can, you can close enough. You can pop down to um, Essen, right? Well, that's good that you bring that up because we got one other set of questions suggested about what we thought about the Spiel DRs nominees. So let's go over them because we've played a couple of them. Adventures of Robin Hood. These are the, the, the Spiel nominees. This is oh, the yeah. German board game of oh, the year yeah. thing. So Adventures of Robin Hood, you know who did? I've pre-ordered it. Do you know what it is? No. It's got a 300 book associated with the game. And it's Legends of Ender. It's Mike Menzel. No kidding. Great artist. It looks very interesting. He did the art and the game. And mm. Micro Macro, which we played and I think is fantastic. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, it was great. It's and then neat... two games yeah. we I don't know. Uh, what was the name of that? Robin Hood? Robin Hood, yeah. I've already pre-ordered it. Okay. That's easy. Please show a clip from each game as you mentioned. them. All right, well, this is live. There's no clips in this video. Um, and then the Kenner Spiel. Oh, Zom Evolution. Never yeah, heard of that. Never yeah. heard of I'm it just either. having had my uh -huh. point salad. I thought point was kind salad of a fun we played. Little, yeah. I, it, it was okay. It's like a throwaway game. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, it's fun for mm -hmm. 10 minutes or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Lost then, Ruins Varnak. I just bought well, that and that's played a couple right. of that. And what did you think of it? I'm not quite sure. I'm like, everything I'm doing, I'm like, it's like such a weird game economy where like, you know, the, clearly some resources are better than others, but you need these weird mixes for to do everything. And I finished the game, like, I'm like, should I, do but I want to But isn't that a good here? feeling? Like, isn't that what you want in a game? The first place to be like, I don't know what I'm yeah, doing. But I think isn't like, that a good sign? Like we mentioned Uwe a lot, but it's like, you know, you're like, okay, well, if I go, if I fish a lot, then I'll have food and then I can smoke the fish. And then like, if I get the cattle, I can... I can, you know, get the wool off them and then I can make cloth and then I can make clothing with that and sell that. And like, you can sort of visualize, like it helps you to understand mm -hmm. what those are. This, it's like, you need an arrowhead and a crystal mm -hmm. and, and a tablet. But this thing, you, you need two you tablets and an arrowhead. Over time, right? It's hard to like, I don't know, it's very odd. I'm not quite sure I, I like it, to be honest with you. I mean, I enjoyed playing, like I was like interested when we were playing it, but like, I don't, I don't know. I'm like, do I keep playing this to see uh -huh. if I like it and, uh -huh. and I understand why everybody likes it? Or do I just say, well, it's okay, but it's not for me. So not quite sure yet. Another one Paleo on that list is you. Paleo, which we just played on Friday and is really scratching mm -hmm. an itch for me. Like, it's fun. It feels consumable, like once yeah, we beat each other, but us. highly recommended. And you can watch our review of Paleo on our channel. Um, there's a question about... Are we waiting on Kickstarters? We are waiting on some Kickstarters. X-Men United. X-Men United. Mm -hmm. um, the ENZ Leg uh, Legacy of Gravehold. The um, Endangered uh, expansion. Endangered expansion. ISS Vanguard. That's the sci-fi one with the binder. Mm -hmm. Maybe one or two others. But we both are very skeptical of Kickstarter. It, it feels worse <laughs> and worse every year. And the shipping costs, especially with all the delays now, are just horrendous. Yeah. The modules, uh, Tom Chick says, Paleo is actually pre pretty replayable. Modules work fine even when you know the cards. Yeah, no, it does seem like it would be replayable, but half the fun is finding those mm -hmm. secrets and figuring out how to beat each set of yeah. modules. Um, Greg, do you have any more craft videos where you made game? Oh, yeah. Yes, Well, he does. we're going to be putting some on. I've got, um, I'm working on a Zombicide one. I'm, I mean, like, I just kind of stopped working on it. But I'm making a lot of terrain for Marvel Crisis Protocol. Like, uh, I've got quite a lot of like a construction set. Yeah, you're, that's crazy. And a gas Marvel station and Crisis stuff. Is like, insane. And, uh, yeah, you I've should got, like, show a, those off. Those Egyptian are insane. One. I got a lot that I've been making for that. So I'm kind of like, I've got like a Thor Ragnarok one. I've got like about six of them for Marvel Crisis that I've, I've at various states of uh, completion. So uh, that I gotta, I gotta kind of do. Mm -hmm. And then I've got. Um, like I said, the Zombicide one I've made because... And I've also got Zombicide Invader, which is a space theme. Mm -hmm. And so, Aliens, you've been painting well, it was, well, I Well, that's painting. That's not really, mm -hmm. like, blinging. But, like, yeah. So we're, we're going to do some more stuff like that, I think, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had a little channel that I had for a while that had, like, uh, some stuff on. I made some overly, like, unrealistic. Like, mm -hmm. But it's called board... Uh, Chrome is what I call it. Well, them. when I, the way I met Greg was buying some board games off him at Craigslist. When Greg was like, I'm out. I'm out of board games. He yeah, sold his yeah, collection. He yeah. said, I'm out. Yeah. And so before he got pulled back in, one of the games was K2. Was like, and then yeah. I watched you. <laughs> K2 mountain, is a yeah. climbing game. And Greg yeah. had made a full 3D mountain. Yeah, we amazing. Like, so 
Uh, I saw online that you could like glue together a lot of styrofoam and then take a brush and like sort of like, you know, Chop brush, it up. just sort of brush away stuff. Oh, uh -huh. And it made the biggest mess that has ever occurred in my household. Like because styrofoam pieces and stuff, they don't, you can't just like sweep them up. They like uh, stick they to things and they, they like uh, fly around and stick to other things. And it was in, in pot. I cannot even believe the mess it made. Like it was insane. But, yeah. You've got an interesting question here, Greg. Do you work in entertainment theater? Is that no. where you get that imaginative oh, no, craft no. trick? I, uh, I actually, well, my wife and I have a business where we travel around. And we have a traveling store, um, so that's what I do. But then it got a hold on hold for uh, COVID, put us out of business. So I went and worked overnight at a grocery store, and now I work uh, for a hospital. But you have some background in performing arts. Yeah, I used to do like circusy type stuff, like uh, yeah. Yeah, and you've got a giant animatronic That's thing you're it. creating. We're trying, right. to make a trying. Big puppet but, right now, but so yeah. Greg, Greg does a lot of these construction yeah, like any, building like, stuff. I guess like I always always like the idea of a Renaissance man, or mm -hmm. you know, like a Renaissance woman. If you're, you know, but what, maybe you what, could convince that style Greg to like, give a tour of his house at <laughs> one point. I don't think that'll ever happen. Probably not. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, like a. That's what we do. Any last questions? Greg getting wolf of cattle. <laughs> Frost nice Haven and there. Seventh Citadel. I've backed both oh, of yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. I'm really looking forward to Seventh Citadel, Citadel. But I'd like to try more Seventh Continent. But like buying all these, that's so crazy. It's like, it's like backing Seventh Citadel and Frost Haven, which are huge games, probably take you months to get through mm -hmm. before we even finish the ones we have. It's kind of like, it's like, it's this consumerism. It's kind of like, you know, like I, I, I like buying stuff too. I like enjoy like getting things and stuff, but it sort of seems like a bit crazy when you, when you think well, about it. It is like, crazy. You know. I mean, I do like looking at the game design back end of some of these things. So even if they don't mm -hmm. get played, sometimes it's enjoyable. What determines what games get prime shelf space back there? We should be able to deduce what games are coming up. Well, yeah, it's a mix of what games are coming up and what games are being played. Like, I had all the detective games up there. Sarah. Yeah, the detective games. Well, we did, have a dis we did have an agreement. Like, Greg was like, certain games have to get off his area. Like, he does not approve of them. Yeah. If I don't like a game, I'm like, get it out of my so, side. So, Greg has some control over the ones on his I'm side. Very small amount of control, yeah. But mm -hmm. that's okay. All right, let's wrap it up yeah. there. We don't want to overstay our welcome, yeah. so we can do another one it's of cool these. It's cool hanging out with everybody. Thanks for Very taking cool. the time Very out fun. of your day to come and hang out with us and chat and stuff. So it was fun having people on here. Yeah. It's very surprisingly enjoyable mm -hmm. to chat with you guys. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully we'll be back in a month or so for another update. Um, all right, folks. Yeah, thank we you. We will see you next time.